One of college football's greatest and most storied rivalries features Ohio State and Michigan. It's a series that dates back to 1897. And one of the most memorable games was the 1950 Snow Bowl. The day started out clear, but by games in, more than a foot of snow had fallen. And so had Ohio State's dreams of a Big Ten title in Rose Bowl birth. A block punt gave Michigan the victory in title. In 1964, Michigan coach Bob Elliott used a special pass pattern he called the trailer play. And that play proved to be the margin of victory, giving the Wolverines its first Big Ten title in 14 years. Quarterback Bob Timberlake added an extra point and field goal for the 10 to nothing win. Last year, lame duck coach Earl Bruce rallied his players and upset Michigan. A last second field goal was the margin of victory. The emotional victory carried with it a degree of redemption for the embattled Bruce. Ohio State head coach John Cooper has stepped up the year-long campaign to motivate his team. Joining the permanent signs in the Ohio State locker room this week were a series of not-so-subtle reminders that the bunch from up north would be visiting to do battle in what is simply referred to around here as the game. It's Ohio State of Michigan on ABC. Michigan and Ohio State meeting for the 85th time before a sellout crowd of more than 89,000 in Ohio Stadium. A cold, blustery day as we approach kickoff time. Before the start of this game, Bo Schimbeckler, the dean of Big Ten coaches, met at the center of the field with John Cooper in his first year at Ohio State. They last met in the 87 Rose Bowl when John Cooper directed his Arizona State team to victory. The Buckeyes and Wolverines, one of college football's most intense rivalries. Coming up, Michigan versus Ohio State. After this word from our local station. It's one of the most intense rivalries in all of college football. The Buckeyes and Wolverines, and here come the Buckeyes of Ohio State. Four, five, and one, needing a win today to avoid their first losing season since 1966. And Michigan will be coming on the field. Hi, everybody. I'm Gary Bender. Buckeye fans have tasted defeat, and they don't like it. Neither does John Cooper. But John Cooper told us that they're going to have to play the game of their life in order to win today. And Dick Vermeil, one of the biggest obstacles he has is that offensive line of Michigan. Well, Gary, if I were John Cooper, I would share the same concerns. Michigan's offensive line is very big, very strong, and are capable of dominating the line of scrimmage. You can see by the graphic coming up that they average over 280 pounds. They have 300 pounders in there, 285 pounders. They can control the line of scrimmage. Now, I would anticipate Ohio State defensive coaches to counter a little bit by varying their defensive fronts, stunning some linemen, some full line slants as well, and even commit linebackers up inside. But what would help Ohio State's cause even more than defense would be the offense to have a great game led by uh, Greg Fry. If he could come up with a big game, they could keep those big offensive linemen on the sidelines. Well, Michigan is headed to Pasadena on January 2nd, but Bo feels if they don't win today, it's not going to be a completely successful year. Dick, they've done so many things so well. As you see, Michigan now coming on to the field. These guys have led the conference in defense. They're number one in rushing. But the biggest thing is the turnover situation. They protected the football this year as opposed to last season. Well, last year, Gary, coming into this game, they were minus three in turnovers, meaning that they turned the ball over three more times than they took it away. This year, they're plus 14. That's a swing of 17 turnovers. Now, most coaches would agree if your football team turns the ball over two more times than your opponent on a given day, you get beat. Well, last year, Michigan turned the ball over, and they got beat. Well, this is a special occasion, a special game, an intense rivalry. Michigan, Ohio State. We're going to be back with the opening kickoff from Ohio Stadium in just a moment. Ohio Stadium, 89,000 plus. The 39th consecutive sellout here on the campus of Ohio State University. Ohio State won the toss. They deferred, and so they'll be kicking off to Michigan. Pat O'Morrow, who's been outstanding, will kick off to Callaway, number two, or John Colazar, number 40. O'Morrow is ready. The 85th meeting. 
the game, they call it, and we're underway. This will be Colazar going back deep, and he will not bring it out, and Michigan will set it up at the 20-yard line. Let's set now offensively the Wolverines of Bo Schembechler. The quarterback will be Demetrius Brown, replacing the injured Michael Taylor, who was hurt two weeks ago against Minnesota. Bunch and Horde. Horde getting the starting call at tailback. McMurtry and Colazar as the wideout. Boy, there's that big offensive line that Dick was talking about. John Vitale, considered by many of the finest center in the country. Jeff Brown, outstanding blocking tight end along with Derek Walker. Look for these guys to run off tackle toward that big number 75. The tight end normally is on his side of the line of scrimmage. Brown, who started last year's game against Ohio State. In fact, that's the last game he's thrown an interception. Callaway goes in motion, and off comes the Leroy Horde. Horde across the 25, has a first down to the 31. He's coming off of a 137-yard game last week. Zach Dumas made the stop. Let's look defensively now at the Buckeyes. Coleman, Sullivan, who had an interception for a touchdown last week, and McCready up front. Linebacking-wise, they've had to make some adjustments. John Kaczerski coming off his finest game. Craig, Sullivan, and McCray. McCray playing with an abdominal muscle problem. And the secondary, Dumas, Clark, Polini, and Peel. Peel, the leading tackler for the Buckeyes. Derek Walker comes in at tight end, a gain of 11. The line of scrimmage, the 31 for the Wolverines. Colazar and Callaway split out. That's Callaway number two in motion. This is Horde again. And Horde for five to the 35-yard line. The stop made by the nose guard, Mike Sullivan. Michigan has already changed up from what they have been doing in the past. They're putting the tight end to the quick side of their offensive line toward Tom Doring, number 73, rather than putting him over by that great big hippo that weighs 325 pounds, John Skrepnik, who's a fine young offensive tackle. And that fouls you up if you were going to slant your line toward the tight end and that big tackle. He's on the other side. The big hippo, huh? Yeah. Oh, is he a big one. And a good one. Second down now. Five yards to go. Just across the 35. First man through Bunch. The fullback. Bunch is about two yards short of the first down at the 39-yard line. This team, Michigan, is averaging 255 yards a game on the ground. That's almost five yards a carry. And they do it so efficiently. And you know something? Talking to their offensive coordinator, Gary Moeller, last night at dinner, he said, you know, we don't vary our offense very much. We're physical enough that we can stay with the same things and try to continually improve our technique and our reaction on the move to the defensive adjustment. Third down now. Two yards to go. Coming into the ball game is Tony Bowles as they come into the wishbone. Brown running the wishbone on this third and two. He's going to give off the bunch. Breaks it across the 50, 40. He's down to the 35, still on his feet. And he's to the 25-yard line. Leroy Horde is the guy that burst out of there. And he has the first down to the 25 of Ohio State. 35-yard run. It's just a power play off tackle. Very simple right there. He gets the blocking he needs on the kick out and at the point of the attack here comes horde now horde is a big physical guy has played fullback all the time he gets the lead block now he has good leg strength gary and here he's demonstrating good speed poor tackling right there you've got to really get your arms around that guy and your pads into him dumas very good tackler on most occasions and bunch and horde have been quite a story the last couple of weeks Bowles didn't play last week because of an injury and this is Bowles. Bowles will make it to the 21, and he's knocked out of bounds there. Tony Bowles has been over 150 yards four times, but he was out last week with a full groin. Dizakovic made the stop that time for Ohio State, and it's going to bring up a second down and a long four. This is why, Gary, I, I would never give them the opportunity to you win the toss. I take the ball and not allow them to put the strength of their football team on the field in the first series and set the tempo maybe for the rest of the ball game. Especially when you're an underdog. Yeah, I, you know, it's just there's different ways to look at it. Obviously, they, they're doing what they think is right. From the 21 now, second down, a five for the Wolverines. That's the 21 of Ohio State. Almost this handled almost. snap. Brown is able to come up with it. Gains a yard to the 19. Good reaction by Brown as Ken Coleman, number 92, was on top of him in a hurry. Again, Demetrius Brown has inherited the starting job because of Michael Taylor's injury two weeks ago against Minnesota. You can take a look. See, he almost dropped that snap from John Vitale, number 67. Now, many times 
when that happens, the, the center is so intense in blocking that nose guard early in the ball game, he sinks his tail just a little too soon on the snap, pulling the, his rear end away from the quarterback's hands, and therefore they get a poor exchange. Almost happened that time. Italian right, Brown now to snap it again. It's third and three. Brown back to throw. His first pass of the game. Far side, it's short, and it's going to bring up a fourth down. John Coltazar, the intended receiver. Well, this is one thing Demetrius Brown did not do very well last year. He only threw 47% complete, 16 pass interceptions, and 11 touchdowns. They're going to miss Michael Taylor. I wonder if he'll be ready for the Rose Bowl. They are claiming he won't be. Bo They're told us at dinner won't. last night he, he didn't think be. he'd be ready for the January 2nd game. Here's Gillette. He's been sensational, trying a 37-yard field goal. The kick is on the way, and Michigan missed it. Mike Gillette who is 15 of 20, his longest being a 49-yarder, just missed what he would consider a chip shot from 37 yards away. And so that long drive produces no points for the Wolverines. When we come back, Ohio State will have the ball for the first time. Well, it's hard for anybody who uh, has never played in the contest between Michigan and Ohio State but certainly anybody who has played in the game remembers it very well because I think without question it's uh, one of the outstanding collegiate rivalries in the country. Like Southern California and UCLA, like uh, Army Navy, Yale Harvard, a great traditional rivalry. When you get to that game, uh, it's for blood. It doesn't matter whether one team has won all nine games before they get there and the other team has lost all nine. You there's no such thing as a paper favorite when Ohio State and Michigan get together because it really go at it, and uh, that's what makes great football competition. Old 99, Tom Harmon. Of course, his son, Mark, played for UCLA, the starting quarterback. He was the quarterback prior to my first year there. Played for Pepper Rogers, did a great job. Wishbone quarterback. Of course, now he's a very successful actor. So after the missed field goal, Ohio State with the ball to the 20-yard line. Snow and Matlock in the backfield behind quarterback Greg Fry. Fry will give to Snow. He's got running room. 30, 35 to the 40. First down. Beta Murray, the free safety over to make the stop, and that's a pretty good beginning offensively for these Buckeyes. 23-yard run. Taking a look at this, the key to this right now is the draw, and he gets the draw block, Messner goes underneath, and he pops it right outside in that lane with a lead by the fullback. Now take a look, he's going to bring it back deep. Snow told me this is his favorite play. He says, Coach, I'd rather run the draw I draw a sprint draw more than any other play because I have my choice as to where to go. First down now at the Ohio State 42. Snow again, this time a little tougher going. Picks up a yard. Good reaction that time by Michigan on the play, and in particular, Mark Spencer. Let's look now offensively at the Buckeyes. Greg Fry's had some very good games for this football team, playing better every week. Matt Locke, a former walk-on. Snow, Graham, who's been a very big, big improvement at that split-in position of Bobby Olive, who Dick thinks weighs 145 pounds. Soaking wet. Ellis had a big game a week ago at tight end. Stasniak, Davidson, Eulen Hake. Well, John Cooper feels he's the best center in the country. Look for these guys to change up on first down and throw a little bit more than they have in the past. Second down, virtually 10 yards to go. Fry, play action fake. Over the middle, Bobby Oliver is picked off, almost picked off, at the 30-yard line by Veda Murray. So Fry that time was too much on that pass, and Olive could not get to it. You know, you can get a little pumped up early in, in a ball game. Now you're going to see play action passing, moving to the left yard. He gets the draw fake, the play that he just ran so efficiently on going to the right earlier. Here he is throwing the square in pattern down the hole. Now the zone three safety, darn near picked that up. He should have made that interception. Here's Mark Messner now, number 60. Now he's working. Now everybody knows he's a great pass rusher. Tim Moxley, 74, doing a good job. But he's going to have to do a little better job with, of jamming with his hands through this ball game if he's going to block him consistently. Boy, he did it there on a third down 10. From the shotgun is dry over the middle. The catch is made by Jeff Graham. Considerably short of the first down. It'll bring up fourth down. So the defense holding right now. Let's look at this Michigan defense. The top rushing, I should say, scoring defense in the Big Ten. White, Osmond, and Messner. We talked about Messner. They made some changes at inside linebacker due to injury with Anderson and Spencer starting. And back deep. David Arnold is back after coming back from an injury, and Welburn has five interceptions. 
on fourth down to punt the football is Jeff Bowman. Colazar can let it hit. And about the 20 yard line is where Michigan will have it for the second time. No score here from Ohio Stadium. We'll be back with more. I have good memories whether we won or lost at uh, the competition between Ohio State and Michigan. It was tough. It was uh, fair. It was um, one of the outstanding experiences I had in my uh, three years of varsity competition. Gerald Ford, former president of the United States and a center for the Wolverine. He wore one of these helmets. <laughs> They've worn them for a long time. Fritz Kreisler is the guy that designed the Michigan helmet. Greg McMurtry, Chris Calloway split out. Bunch and Bowles in the backfield. Michigan with the ball for the second time. Callaway goes in motion. This is Bowles. And Bowles close to the 24, darts to the outside, and he's got a first down with an outstanding second effort. Vincent Clark eventually knocked him out of bounds. Looked like he was stopped at the 25. You can see the defensive line moving here. Now watch as the nose guard takes a move and starts slanting in the direction of the play. Does a pretty good job. Here he is. It's a good hand. I've seen Sullivan moving into play now. He's moving inside on good pursuit, but they didn't get their arms wrapped around him. This guy doesn't look like he's been injured at all, does he, Gary? No, he doesn't. Bowles having one of the most productive years in Michigan history, despite missing last week. Picking up 11 yards. McMurtry Colazar split out a first down at the 32 of Michigan. McMurtry in motion. Bowles again. Bowles. Comes across the 40 to the 41. He's a yard short of the first down, and Mark Bellini made the stop. So the Wolverines moving the ball. Let's go back now to New York. Here's Al Troutwick. Gary, in the first college football game ever played in Dublin, Ireland, BC got off to a quick start on this Mike Sanders touchdown run to beat Army 38-24. Sun Bowl officials tell us this loss will not affect Army's date with Alabama in the Sun Bowl. Back to you. Boy, that was an early start. I was watching that early from Dublin, playing an old rugby stadium. But now, second down, a yard to go. Horde is coming to the backfield along with Bunch. This is Horde. He's got the first down, and he comes to the 45, 46-yard line. Knocked out of bounds by Dumas. Boy, they really have a good change of pace when they go from Bowles to this guy, Leroy Hoard. Two different runners. You know, with this offensive line, it's hard to evaluate which guy is a great back because here's Bowles, who averages 5.5 yards a carry. Tracy Williams, his back up 5.8. Bowles gets hurt, so they need move Hoard, their fullback over there. He's averaging 5.2. You tell me. Which, uh, which guy can run the back? I don't know, but if I was going to be a running back, I'd like to be behind that Michigan Me line. Me too. I'd like to be the running back coach. <laughs> yeah. Look at that coach. Those guys average five yards a carry. Bowles has come back into the ball game. The officials now getting everything squared away. It will be a first down across the 45 to the 46. There he is, Bo Schimbecker. What a great time we had. We had dinner at, with he and his team last night. That was really a great experience. And it's the first time we'd ever been invited to a, a training table dinner like that. I tell you, I couldn't eat half of it. Oh, uh, you were nervous. You thought you were... <laughs> Back to... Th There's the sprint draw. Off it goes to Bowles. 45-40 down the sideline. And he's still on his feet inside the 20-yard line. I think he's been marked out of bounds, though, way up across the 35, and he has. He stepped out at the 36 of Ohio State. Dumas able to jam him out on the far side. All right, now focus your attention on the defensive line, because they're the people that have to stop this draw play. Now, the ball will be snapped. Now, you see they're moving. Now, Pat Thomas, number 54, to the right center of your screen. Now, he gets blocked by Dingman up inside there. <laughs> Boy, I tell you, he can accelerate once he sees that daylight, can he? He's got that long stride. Very unusual for a running back, and he gets it turned on that corner, gets those shoulders turned up the field. He's something special. But he also has the ability to shorten that stride when he gets in that contact area. First down now. They marked it at the 36-yard line. Bowles again. Lead blocked Ooh. by Huzar, and Ooh. Huzar just wiped out a Buckeye, and that's able to get... Bowles to the 29-yard line of Ohio State. You're going to see here big Mike Huzar at number 74. Now he's going to pull and dip and come outside and block. The force are going to get a good block out here by the fullback. 
Here he goes. Now, big pull, sweep across, and there's the block outside. Now, watch Uzar. Boom, right <laughs> on Zach Dumas, 21. That's a real mismatch physically. You've got to get up closer to the line of scrimmage and take that on. He's playing with a bad knee. He hurt it a couple of weeks ago against Minnesota. He wears the brace both on and off the field. Give to Horde, and Horde's inside. The 25 to the 24, another first down for Michigan. Gary, this is the reason when they had that third and three and threw the ball, I said to, to you at the commercial, why in the heck would they throw on third and three when they're, you know, that first drive, they had 61 yards running. Sometimes you can get too smart as a coach, you know? Yep. Well, they had 61 yards rushing on that first drive, then threw on that critical third down, then missed the field goal. But now they're back again, first down at the 23. They won't throw on the next third and three. <laughs> Not with Bo down there. <laughs> Derek Walker in a tight end. Oh. Brown gives to Bowles, and Bowles inside the 20 to the 19-yard line. Again, this Michigan offensive line is controlling the line of scrimmage. They are knocking the scarlet and gray forward wall backwards. This is a good picture of what's going on in the pit there. Now, Dingman blocking the nose guard, Sullivan. Now, he cuts back, see? And you have to rely, especially against a team as big and physical as Michigan's offensive line is, your backside defensive linemen and linebackers maintaining good discipline and filling those cutback holes. Boy, they are having their worst fears realized right now. That's trying to hold up against a strong offensive line. Second down and six. And Ford again. Ford still on his feet. He's to the five first and goal for Michigan. Now they went ahead and committed linebackers that time. 95 John Kaczerski came in from the back side. And you'll see they had good penetration. They brought Kaczerski from here. I mean, they're making a commitment to get after these people. But he didn't get there. Here he comes coming real hard. He gets a little piece of him. He's right re through that hole. And you see Pat Thomas getting blocked there. Now Pat Thomas, number 54, is only six foot one, 235 pounds against those guys. It's physically tough to hold up. Ford was held out of game a couple of weeks ago because he missed some classes. He is a character. He didn't even make the trip. He is some character, though. Out of the New Orleans area, first and goal outside the five. Ford again, and Ford inside the five to about the three-yard line, where it'll be second and goal. Getting back to Ford, sitting next to Bo last night, he says, you know, the guy has great talent. He's a little undisciplined yet. He hasn't been in our program long enough. And, and he, he's, he's not getting up right he's now. He's not getting up right now. Maybe he's hearing us talking about him. I, I hope he's not hurt. But he was saying he's sort of a happy-go-lucky kid. You know, he cut a couple classes in the same week, and Bo heard about it. He cut some classes that Bo knew the teacher. That's so he got the report right away. So they didn't even bring him on the trip. And he's a starting fullback. Somebody else plays. But... He's one of those personality guys. In fact, what do they call him? The mouth of the South? There's two of them. Ward Manuel is the defensive end, and this guy are both from New Orleans, and they call them the mouths of the, of the South. South yeah. But Bo Schimbeckler's got to be concerned as they're looking at that right knee. Let's go back to New York during this injury. Here's Al. Okay, Gary, in the 124th renewal of college football's oldest rivalry, Lafayette has tied Lehigh with a Frank Bauer 11-yard touchdown pass. Local resident Roger Connors, 87 years old, is there watching his 79th straight Lehigh-Lafayette matchup. Back to you. You ever been to Lehigh? Up Pennsylvania? Well, Bethlehem, this, Pennsylvania. Great little town. That doesn't look good for Horde, does it? They have lost already their starting quarterback a couple of weeks ago in Taylor. They had Bowles out a week ago. And right now, Horde, who had the big game last week against Illinois, being helped off. Let's see. We, he, he's the left-hand corner of your screen, number 33. Let's see if we can see what happened, Gary. He's getting twisted around right there. Now, his both legs, yeah, you can see uh. there, John Kaczerski, 95, comes across it and hit him from the front. Now, I would say if you get hit from the front like that, Gary, the odds are better that you didn't hit it seriously as when you get it hit from the side in a plane. That looked good, though, the way he's going off. Probably got it strained a little bit. Second and goal now for the four. The Wolverines go to the wishbone. The lead back is Bunch. Bowles and also in the ball game is Tracy Williams at the top of the picture. And here is Bowles. Flip goes nowhere. Good job by John Sullivan, number 57, one of the Sullivan twins. Well, they didn't get points the last time. And now they got to be a little concerned on a third and goal from the five. 
this turf here is going to be replaced. It's old and it's not as good as far as the traction and the footing. And that concerned both these teams. Saying it's not as good as uh, doing them a favor, it's a lousy turf. And they're going to put a new one there. And what they haven't decided is whether it's going to be a natural turf, meaning grass, or an artificial turf. But this one's worn out. Iowa's going to natural grass. Third and goal now for the five. Bunch is in. He's the fullback behind Demetrius Brown. Three wideouts to the near side. Brown looking, throwing, and it's incomplete. Callaway, the intended receiver. Jim Peel, 46, the leading tackler, was there first. You're going to see the three wideouts right here now run a combination crossing pattern. Now, what they're trying to do is get a pick. See that Callaway tried to get a pick right there. He moved back inside. Mark Pellini, it was a poor throw. If the, poor, the ball was thrown up high in his numbers, he might have been able to go inside and take that ball. Well, Gillette missed one from 37. This is going to be a 22-yard attempt. He's only missed... He's only missed three in his career out of 26 attempts from this distance. Chances are he's going to make it. Snap is down. Gillette's kick is on the way, and Michigan is on the scoreboard. 3 nothing with 5.47 to go in this first quarter. Michigan very successful moving the football. One time not getting points on the board, but now in the game, lead 3 to nothing. Well, it meant to me that, uh, you know, you're playing one of the best teams in the country. And if you can beat a team like Michigan, you beat one of the best. And uh, that was what our standard was, to beat a Michigan. I mean, it, it, it's, it's, it's just, as they say, the game. It is the game that you shoot for. People come to Ohio State to play against Michigan. Archie Griffin, the only guy in the history of college football to win the Heisman Trial. There is the last drive. Gillette now officially given a 23-yard field goal. 3-0, and Dick, nothing surprising yet, the way Michigan's moving the football. No, they're not. But actually, you know, at, uh, they've only come out with the three points, as we know, and, and that might be a little bit of a boost to Ohio State. Here's Carlos Snow, who leads the Big Ten and kickoff Ooh. returns, and as he belted it at the 25-yard line. Let's go down now to another member of our team. Here's Becky Dixon. Gary, I just talked to the Michigan doctors about the condition of Leroy Horde. They say he has a contusion to the right knee. They're not certain yet whether or not he'll go back into the football game. But right now, he is up moving around on the sideline. Thank you, Becky. Well, you were right, Coach Vermeil. When you get hit from the front, you got a better chance of returning. Oh, yeah. I've seen enough you know, knees get banged around a little bit in the 23 years of coaching. Normally, that is not as serious. From the 25, Ohio State will set it up. Trailing three to nothing. Matlock and Snow in the backfield behind Greg Fry. Play action fake by Fry. A lot of time. Ellis the tight end. Can't come up with it. Jeff Ellis, who had eight catches for 97 yards last week, not able to come up with that grab. David Key defending for Michigan. So Fry, on a couple of opportunities, hasn't thrown the ball all that well. No, actually, he took too much time. Now, that's a crossing pattern to the tight end. Had good action. He came across open, and he just waited too long to throw the ball. John Cooper, the first the game opportunity between Ohio State and Michigan. Boy, you could sense that his uh, adrenaline was flowing this week. Second down, 10, just across the 25. Sprint draw, handoff to Snow. Snow out to the 29, pick up a four yards. It'll bring up a third down and six, and Mike Teeter, the nose tackle, able to trip up Snow. Snow, you feel a very courageous runner. He really hits up top. Oh, he really does. He's averaging 4.8 yards a carry, but as you said, Gary, he's leading the Big Ten in kickoff returns as well. He has a 100-yard return for a touchdown. You know, the guy is a good runner, but he, he's a better daylight runner than he is a, a design exact point of attack runner. Graham and Olive split to the near side on a third and six for the Buckeyes. That's Olive in motion. Fry looking up the middle. Ellis, he's got it, and that's the first down for Ohio State to the 41-yard line. Abram making the stop for Michigan. He read the pressure coming quickly. Now you're going to see some stunning in the defensive line here. He doesn't care about the stunning. Gets the quick pass. Boom, he just pops it off there quickly. The stunt gets in there. Doesn't need to block him when you get the ball, uh, rid of the ball that quick. Throw it up that seam. Ellis, again, his father, Jimmy, the ex-heavyweight champion of the world, and 
John Cooper told us he thinks that this guy has a chance not only to be a good football player, but a great one. Yeah, and he was actually disappointed he had to play him this year and not redshirt him because he's, you know, not really mature yet. First down now for the Buckeyes at their own 41. Try to snow. And Messner's Messer. there. Yes, sir. And that is another tackle for loss. He only needed two to set a school record. He needs the one more. Now, here's Mark Messner. Mark Messner, here he is right now. See him make the move underneath. Now, the guard, in this case, Davidson, overreached in trying to hook him. And he's quick enough to go underneath that. Now, he told us yesterday that the first practice he missed in four years at Michigan was Tuesday. He didn't get to practice, and he was a little concerned because he has a sore ankle. He does. That is his 67th tackle for a loss in his career, his 23rd of the season. He gets in the backfield a bit, doesn't he? He is a problem. <laughs> Second down, 15 from the shotgun. Give to Matlock, the fullback, and he is hit by Abrams. Doubles across the 35 to the 37. Peter over there to finish him off. So it's going to bring up third down a long ways to go. I sort of anticipate from talking to the coaches, the offensive coordinator, Jim Coletto, you will see some running out of the shotgun because they haven't done much running out of the shotgun. It's been almost 100% pass, and, and it's good to change up on Michigan. So it's going to be third down, 13 from the 38. Edwards, Graham split out. Edwards to the near side. From the shotgun is Fry. Protection is excellent. And up the field, intended for Graham, and Graham can't come up with it. The 42. And Fry had him wide open. Graham had made a good cut to the near side, and uh, the ball just wasn't there. Top of your screen now. It's a deep curl. He's coming inside. Now the safety working inside out. Now see him turn. Now keep your feet moving. Keep your feet moving. See? He didn't locate the ball quick enough to move to the ball as he turned around. Now maybe the quarterback threw it too far inside, but many times a receiver gets his eye on the ball quick enough he can move his body into that ball. Coleman punting. Colazar fields it. Up to the 25, and he'll be dropped at the 27. Good reaction on the near side by Ohio State. And so at the 250 mark of this first quarter, Michigan leads it three to nothing. Going to college at the University of Michigan is certainly a wonderful experience. One can savor many things on the campus, but if you are there as a student athlete, specifically a football player, only two things count. One is getting the opportunity to play in the Michigan-Ohio State football game. Second is winning the Ohio State-Michigan game. Dan Deardorff, he went on to outstanding success in the National Football League with the St. Louis Cardinals. But you'll see him Monday night on Monday Night Football as now Demetrius Brown, his team with a three to nothing lead, set it up, 2.50 to go in the first quarter. The line of scrimmage to the 28-yard line. Tony Bowles. Bowles brings it out to the 33-yard line, gain of about five. Ken Coleman over there to make the stop. And coming up next, so much at stake. USC, UCLA, the battle for Los Angeles, the battle for the Rose Bowl, the battle for the national title. Had a long conversation with Terry Donahue the other day about the game. And, you know, at this time, in the middle of the week, you're so concerned, you're not, you know, you're really uptight about it. He just thinks he needs a big game out of Aikman and a solid defensive game, and they can win it. But they've been, oh, what? USC is tough to run on. They're physical, aren't they? <laughs> oh, that's putting it mildly. On a second and five, uh -oh. Bowles gets out to the 35-yard line, a couple of yards short of the first down. Mark Pellini over to make the stop. This is a little different wrinkle in the running game, and they're using the fullback to hook the outside linebacker or defensive end and then bounce around to the outside. They've been running more up inside through the Big Ten season. You look at that Michigan offensive line. You've heard an awful lot about my tally at center, but the guy that I'll be watching in the years ahead is number 75, Greg Strepanek, who Bo told me last night was the second best offensive tackle in the Big Ten, and he's just a freshman. I believe he's right. Third down, two. Sprint draw. Bowles, he's got the first down to the 43. And again, that offensive line is knocking people down. Well, that was a draw technique, you know, and you, you don't have to knock them down, just turn them and control it. You can see the key here now, the big guy we are talking about, he sets his pass, he comes up outside like that, and they get up underneath him. 
See, now he turns him right outside like that and left that draw block. That isn't a physical block, but it, as your big as 75 is, Skrepnik at 325 pounds, when you get that close to him, you know, he can just sort of power you with his arms. I watched practice one day with Skrepnik from the end zone, and he looks humongous when he lines up and gets that split. First down now, the line of scrimmage to 43 of Michigan. Colasar in motion. Play action fake by Brown. Brown deep to McMurtry, wide open. He's got it at the 10. Touchdown, Michigan. pass now Pelini number 48 you see at the bottom of your screen the safety held in there now I'm not sure what the coverage was but if it was a double zone Pelini was supposed to be back here covering it because Clark number seven the corner was rolled up short McMurtry coming up with the touchdown his third of the year 57 yards and Gillette now point after attempt 106 to go in this first quarter play nine to nothing Michigan they get 10 to nothing, and Gillette right through the middle. So Demetrius Brown, who's playing a place of the injured Michael Taylor, delivering that touchdown strike, his fourth of the year. And McMurtry, so smooth, so fluid, had everybody beat deep. There was absolutely no contest on that one. Let's go down to Becky. Gary, for many of the Buckeye fans here today, this game brings back memories of a ghost from the past. When it came to playing Michigan, Woody Hayes was a man obsessed. Now that brings us to this thought. Wonder what old Woody would have to say about this game if he were here today. Well, here's one student's version. Oh, Beck, I've always told you about Ohio State, Michigan being the greatest football game of the year. Uh, they, they beat us deep. I think the DB didn't read the coverage well, but uh, the thing about Ohio State that I like the most is their competitors, and they have that discipline. There's no doubt in my mind that it's Buckeyes. They'll be back. Oh, yeah, sure. Just a few quick thoughts on Bo Schembechler. Oh, I have the utmost respect for Bo, and I think he, he's one of the last great, great coaches because he's a disciplinarian, and the things he does with his football team that there's no doubt that he'll go down is in the rivalry is one of the greatest coaches that ever was around. Oh, yeah, he's that All good. Right, thank sure. you. Gary, I think Woody would be flattered. <laughs> he would be. The Boy. only thing that was wrong with that is he wasn't in shirt sleeves. Now, Woody would have been here in shirt sleeves today. Carlos Snow, an ill-advised return on that kickoff, it looked like, as he brought it out to about the 15-yard line area, so Ohio State will start deep in their own end of the field. It's amazing, though, to watch that, and it kind of brings goosebumps back. I was around Woody a lot. I had so much respect for him, and what a great man he was, and, and what... What a legend he is. Well, the kid, while well, we were studying films the other day, and, and the, the young man that did the impersonation walked in and started talking to us. You and I looked at each other. Who is this guy? He was uh, playing on us, and we've both been around Coach Hayes enough to know he sounded what just is like that? him. And what is that? That imitation is the finest form of flattery, and that's exactly what that is. From the 15-yard line, Fry gets off the snow, and so stays on his feet for a couple of yards. Gets close to the 18-yard line. So Ohio State finding themselves down 10 to nothing. Eric Anderson and T.J. Osmond on the stop. Carlos Snow, who last year caught a 70-yard touchdown pass against Michigan in that win in Earl Bruce's final coaching game here at Ohio State. He's a short little guy. You know, he ran for 7,856 yards. That's four and a half miles in high school. No wonder he's so short. <laughs> Second down and seven now for the Scarlet and Gray. Fry back to throw. They pick up everything well. He throws the near side, and Ellis can't hang on. That would have been enough for the first down had he caught the ball. Bobby Abrams defending on the play. Abrams very fluid and mobile, number 24. He's a former defensive back, now playing a linebacker spot. Well, the, the most remarkable thing about this guy, he had a 3.8 GPA in high school, eight semesters in a row, the honor roll. Far better student than I was in high school. I'll tell you that. <laughs> well, one thing Bo said, he's got great perseverance in the classroom and also on the football field. A self-made type of guy, really motivated, good attitude. Third down and seven now for the Buckeyes. They need some success. They are trailing 10 to nothing. They don't want to give the football up again. Fry setting up. 
up the middle pressure. He dumps it off to Mark Hicks. Hicks fights his way up for a first down as Hicks, who has been playing with a bad ankle all year long, made a very good move to shake loose. Anderson Welburn made the stop, and John Cooper's team has the first down. You're going to see some stunts to the right side of your screen. Defensive lineman not picked up. Mark Mesner right in there. He does a nice job of checking it off to Hicks. Now, here is Hicks running up there, and he's not too excited to play in the, about this cold weather game because he's from Northern California, Davis, California, to be exact. And he says he likes it back here, but he likes it better when it's warm. Well, he's a transfer from the University of California. Been hurt most of the year after 15 minutes in the game. And Michigan leads it 10 to nothing. Quarter number two, Ohio Stadium. Columbus, Gary Bender, Dick Vermeil, and Becky Dixon. Ohio State has the first down as we start quarter number two from their own 28-yard line. Olive and Graham split out and all kinds of movement up front. Look like Greg Zacharoff, number 51, the right side guard move. You know, sometimes the uh, young offensive oh, linemen, when they get on the great player, the All-American candidate, they see him lined up there. See, now, Mesner normally Still lines up down. on the offensive tackle. This time he's on the guard on Zakroff. He sees him there. You know, that can be disconcerting. Look at his 150 yards rushing. rushing. They're averaging 255 a game, so I would say they're on track to having another big game. <laughs> In fact, they're on a fast track. <laughs> they're on a fast track. Ohio State, somehow you get the sense they need to get something going here. First and 15 now after the penalty. Graham and Otto split out. Here is a give now. Jamar Kick. Pick stays on his feet. Good spin move to the 35-yard line. They still need about four yards for a first down. Mark Hicks has battled back to become part of this football team. Middle of your screen, Mark Mesner does a little stunt back to the inside. He doesn't get cut off by Moxley, 74. He gets him right there, doesn't get him wrapped up. And here comes Hicks running like he did at Cal the first couple of years. Well, he had to take 21 hours of summer school to get eligible. Then he's had the ankle injury. Plus the fact, I think when you don't play for a year, it really slows you down. A lot of athletes find that in every sport. Second down, a long four. Fry rolling out. He's going to take off. And he's got the first down as he goes Finish across the 40 to the 41. Good heads-up play by Fry. You know, Fry's not a great athlete, Dick, but he's very coachable, and he seems to really understand the game. You know, I had a great visit with him the other day for about a half an hour in the locker room after practice, and I, I said, Greg, you know, you really improved. We saw you the first couple games of the season. You played well, but now you're so much more sure of yourself. The first thing he told me is about some of the bad things he did during the year. I said, listen, young man, you play that position. Hey, the guys in the Pro Bowl make mistakes as well. Forget the mistakes and go from there. Well, that was a heads-up run. Everyone was covered. First down now at the Ohio State 41. 10-0, Michigan. Fry back, setting up, protection, breaking down, and it's incomplete. He was buried that time. Pressure coming up the middle from Mark Spencer. He was trying to connect up with Jeff Graham, but he didn't get the time he needed. Here, he, you'll see the play action pick. He has plenty of time. Good coverage downfield. This is enough time. Now, watch him get set up. He has enough time. There's Osmond, 94. He has enough time. It's just the patterns are either taking too long to develop or he's taking too much time to throw it or the coverage is taking it away. One of those three. Boy, he got belted by Spencer, didn't he? Spencer's their biggest linebacker. He's a sophomore out of Troy, Michigan. He is starting now with J.J. Grant out of the lineup with a knee injury, and Grant is not expected back for the Rose Bowl. Brian now is 3 of 8 for 26 yards. Second down, 10. No, no. Around the neck by T.J. Osmond. And as his forward progress will be marked at the 44-yard line. T.J. Osmond, number 94, the nose tackle. Here he is not playing on the nose at this time. He's moved over. Now, T.J. Osmond is a guy, he's not built like the typical nose tackle. In fact, Bo says he, he's sort of a bucket butt, but he really gets the job done. And when we met him last night, we were surprised. We made him repeat his name twice because he just didn't look like a nose guard. Well, they say he just flopped around he just out there. Just flopped around and makes big plays. They call him the rubber band man. Yeah. Third down and seven, fry back. Near side, and Ellis, the big tight end, again, not able to make the catch. And it's going to bring up a fourth down. And 
Beta Murray was defending on the play. See, they're going to have to convert on those third downs. What they better do is a little better job on first down. Maybe shorten up some of those passes on short uh, first down that they use. It's a little higher efficiency because they give the ball back to these big guys. They don't get it back sometimes right. until they get in the end zone. Bowman to punt. Colazar goes back second of the Big Ten and punt returns. Not a good punt. Nope. And it's going to die just where it hit at the 30-yard line. Michigan with a 10 to nothing lead. They have the football. 13, 16 to go. That's only a 25-yard punt. In Columbus. Al, thank you. 10 nothing Michigan. Thus far dominating this football game. A crowd of over 89,000 on hand. A lot of scarlet and gray and maize and blue represented here. What a tradition. 13-16 to go, second quarter. Line of scrimmage, the 30. Callaway comes in motion. Straight ahead, Jarrett Bunch. The sophomore fullback, and he'll move it out to the 35. It'll be five yards short of the first down. John Vitale, the big All-American candidate playing center, does a good job of turning the nose guard out. Sullivan, he cuts in back behind him. Now, Sullivan and Vitale have been battling each other for four years. They played on each other. I mean, they... they they can remember each other's breath after that amount of time, you know. I tell you, Vitaly is some character. Isn't oh, he? he is. He showed up to the first day of training camp this fall with his head shaved like a Michigan helmet in that design. Can you believe that? Second and five, and a handoff this time to Horde. And Horde is back in the game, as you anticipated, and he ran there like there was nothing wrong with him. He's a tough kid. He really is tough. That's a first down for Michigan. Did you see Sullivan number? See, he's trying to get him to jump himself. <laughs> he says, Eric, I'll try to get in that hole. I hope you snap the ball as I'm moving. I'll be right in there for a good play. By Galley is such a character. He comes up with business with you. He's kind of a swashbuckling type guy. He was mad at us last night, though. He didn't yeah. get his hat. Well, he's got to get his ABC hat or we won't get out of here alive. He, he has a collection of about 200 hats. <laughs> first down now for the 42. Colazar in motion. Hort stays on his feet, and Hort is almost, if not to the first down marker, on just sheer determination. Mark Pellini hanging on and getting a free ride. You never know this guy was helped off the field back in the first quarter. You know, what makes him a little better than some running backs is that when he gets in a little trouble, he squares up his base, and he can go right or left, depending on where he has to go, you know? Uh, some guys that get the, the long strides, they can't yeah. make those kind of sliding moves. He already has 93 yards on nine carries. He's had two big games. Remember the two 54-yard touchdown runs against Indiana, and then last week, 137 yards against Illinois, and he's becoming more and more of a big factor in this Michigan offense. I think Bo is finding out that he may be the best running back. But you know the other thing he does? He has a great sense of running in the end zone area. He has scored a touchdown one every 12 carry in his career. He knows where that end zone is. Look at this. They are outscoring teams by 18 points a game. And look at that third quarter. Yeah. 80 to 20. They ought to skip it. <laughs> First down. Now by measurement, they had to wait. Brown having footing problems. Throws the near side. Colazar! Out of bounds. And I think he's out of bounds and in. Zach Dumas defending on the play. So Brown has thrown one touchdown pass of 57 yards, trying to hook up with Colazar. If you don't think this turf is slick, watch the quarterback now. Oh, it, he planted his back foot to throw, and he almost slipped and fell. Now, Zach Dumas right there actually misjudged the ball a little bit, had him covered. Now, Zach is from Deadford, New Jersey, right across the bay. He was a big Eagles fan. I was pleased to hear that. Going home for Thanksgiving. Really excited about getting home and have Mom cook him a turkey. Well, that ball was in the air about 50 yards. Incomplete brings up second and 10. McMurtry and Callaway split out. 10 nothing Michigan. 11.47 to go in the second quarter. Callaway comes in motion. Hand off this time to Bowles. And Bowles is inside the 45 to the 43 of Ohio State. Tackle made by Michael McCray. You know, I think one thing that has hurt the game plan of Ohio State defensively is what they're doing with Big Screpnik, 75 in the tight end. He's been playing on the split inside of the formation, and they haven't done that. 
this year in the games that we've seen. And, and you have your line calls all going towards Strepnik and the tight end, and now it's someplace else that really shakes you up. Crowd hoping that maybe somehow Ohio State can hold air. Third down and seven yards to go. In motion goes Coldazar. Brown to set up. Up the middle, incomplete. Derek Walker, the tight end, the intended receiver. And so Michigan will have to punt the football. Brian Benio, the inside linebacker. Gary Moeller, really upset, isn't he? I don't know why he's so mad. He doesn't normally get that mad. They must have grabbed and held on to somebody, and he, uh, the official didn't see it. Give it to him, Gary. Well, you think hey, maybe this game doesn't rile you up a little, a little miserable. bit? miserable. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Gary, former head coach at Illinois, was the defensive coordinator, now has moved over to the offensive coordinator position the last couple of years. As Gillette now will go back and punt, and Bobby Olive will go back for the Buckeyes. Bobby Olive is another splendid splinter. I mean, he's a tiny little guy. They list him at 154. I'll bet he doesn't weigh that much. Olive calls for the fair catch, makes it at the nine-yard line. So the Buckeyes need to get something going. They trail 10 to nothing, 34-yard punt. Disappointing Ivy League seasons for both Yale and Harvard, but Brian Hennon picks up this blocked punt and carries it 40 yards for a touchdown. So much can be salvaged if one of these teams can simply win the 105th edition of the game. Yale leads it 13-0. Well, this is the 85th meeting here. A lot of big games wrapping up this regular season of play in college football. After that punt by Gillette is first to the game, Ohio State has it inside their own 10-yard line. They trail 10 to nothing. Fry pitches back to Snow. Snow for a couple of three, and then stays on his feet and squirms across the 15 to the 16-yard line. Bobby Abrams and David Key made the stop. When you're built low to the ground, you can do that once in a I while. I was thinking that same thing. See, he doesn't have to bend over very far to get his pads below your pads when you attempt to tackle him. Carlos Snow, but they list him at 5'9". I can eat soup off his head, really, and I'm only 5'10". I'm in there talking to him, and I'm looking down at him. It made me feel pretty good. <laughs> Soup off his head from the 17 yard line. He has line. one of those flat top haircuts. <laughs> okay. Everyone, where, you're really good. You could put a bowl right there. Second down three. Edwards and Graham put to the top of the field. No again. No out across the 20. That'll be a first down to the 21. Eric Anderson made the stop. So Snow now getting some operating room for the Buckeyes. Carlos Snow, we mentioned that 70 yard touchdown catch last year against Michigan. He also had a four-touchdown game against Minnesota a year ago. He comes in here averaging 4.8 a carry. He's eighth in the Big Ten in rushing. He's been alternating back there with James Bryant, and a moment ago you saw Mark Hicks. One thing that John Cooper felt he had coming into the year was depth, but he lost Vince Workman at that spot, and it really hurt him. It hurt him in more than one spot, too. From the 21, Fry back. Graham... And coming back to the ball was David Key. He was closest to it. So Fry not connecting on a first down toss. Key, by the way, number 26, is out of the Columbus area. So this is kind of a special trip for him. David Key out of Hartley High School in Columbus, Ohio. So he's a fine running back. Ran for over 4,000 yards as a running back. Converted to the defensive secondary. And Bo says he's really improving. And here he is, just a junior. He, uh, He'll have a good career. I'll tell you, this Michigan team is only going to get better next year. I know it, but if you're going to win at Ohio State, you better keep those Columbus kids home. <laughs> Second down, 10 after the miss, and from the shotgun is Fry. He has Graham and Edwards split out. Hand off to Snow. To the 25, flag on the play as he's across the 30 to the 31. And that correction is Scotty Graham, the fullback, not Snow on the play. And Graham is able built to bring it out to the 31. They're built the same, though. Scotty is a little bigger. Scotty Graham there. Here you see it's a little handoff underneath. He should have, I think, taken that up underneath with the lead block because Brett White, 88, really had it well enough contained. But you say he's one of those short, squatty guys with the big legs as well. He's a freshman redshirt out of Long Beach, New York. Let's see what the penalty's about. It's Still against. second down, half the distance foul. Oh. There's an illegal block against Ohio State. So Cooper will have that very fine run negated, and that's the kind of mistakes you can't make against a team like Michigan. I got a kick out of his first response when you said, Cooper, 
what are we going to have to what are you going to have to do to win this football game what is it going to have to play the game of our lives and able to win this and uh, I spoke at a luncheon the other day and I got up and I said you know if I were going to coach in the ball game Saturday I'd much rather coach Michigan I was always a better coach when I had better players <laughs> that's very unusual that's really surprising <laughs> yeah. second down now 18 for the scarlet and gray Ahmed goes in motion No, and he fumbled. fumbled it. Picked up by Michigan. That's David Arnold, but it'll be blown dead. The ball will be blown dead where he recovered at the 17-yard line. Boy, and there is a critical, critical mistake for Ohio State, who was last in the Big Ten in the turnover department. They're minus 14. Last year at the end of the season, they were plus five. Minus 14 this year. Uh -uh. And you know, this Carlos Snow has fumbled five times, that being his sixth time this year. They've lost all six of the fumbles. Normally, you go at least 50%, you get him back. Here it is, it's a counter gap. He's pulling, he's got it tucked away in his right arm. Then I can't see the number came around and grabbed him and uh, ripped the arm away from the body. And David Arnold, number 15, back from injury, running it in. He thinks he can score with it. David Arnold's their best secondary player. He's the senior and very good cover man. The ball will be marked at the 17 of Ohio State. The turnover, giving Michigan a chance to build on their lead. Ford to the 15. Boy, if he's strong, he is able to advance that ball to the 12-yard line. And what an outstanding situation is for Schimbeckler. He can go with this guy or Tony Bowles. It seems to make no difference. You have a hard time making the decision. What you probably make your decision on is who's getting tired. Yeah. And I think also from a competitive standpoint, if you're a running back, let's say you and I are running backs, and you're in the game and you're running your tail off, when I get my chance, I'm going to make sure I, I really go, because if I don't, you're going to be right back in there. A little motivation. You bet. Gain of five, second and five. Callaway and McMurtry split out. Ten nothing Michigan. This time Horde uh -oh. to the ten, to the five. Horde fights his way in and he takes it in. Touchdown, Michigan. There is a penalty flag clear on the near side, so let's wait. It's clear back at the 15-yard line. I thought for a moment the left side of the offensive line fired out yeah. prematurely. Good call. That's what it is. It looked like he moved just before the snap of the ball. And I don't think Bo can argue that because it was just kind of out of the corner of your eye. Let's see if we can pick it up. Here it is, the bottom of your screen. Now there's the ball. You can concentrate on the ball. Let's see which moves first. I didn't see anybody move. I did on the yeah. real time, but yeah. I don't see it on I that didn't replay. I did see it on that one. I didn't see anybody move. Boy, that was good running. Had a pretty good hole initially. See, the thing is, when you're a good running back and you get to the line of scrimmage and there is a hole there, you can continue to accelerate. Then when somebody hits you coming from a linebacker position or the secondary, you've really got a head of steam up. Now, Jeff Brown, evidently, is the guy they called it on. Bo was over there talking to Jeff. Jeff is saying, I didn't do anything. I still thought I saw somebody yeah. move. Well, it's obvious that they did because the officials never make a mistake. <laughs> oh, yeah, you. You of all people to say that. Here's a give on the draw to Horde, and Horde is into the end zone anyway for the touchdown. <laughs> Impressive. Leroy Horde, who has really been coming on as of late, just came back. The penalty didn't stop him very long, did it? 18 yard touchdown run. That's impressive football. 16 nothing in favor of the Wolverines. Gillette, point after attempt coming up. Boy, this Michigan team is only three points away from a perfect season. They could be ranked number one, and they're playing like the number one ranked team right now. They're probably as good when you consider that, you know, the three points they lost the two games, one to Notre Dame and one to University of Miami. Taking a look at this from ground level, you'll note that the quarterback is going to take it back deep. It's that sprint draw again. He had good blocking at the point that made the intelligent cut. Poor tackling right there. They're reaching to grab for this guy. He has those strong legs, and he can pull his legs out and get it in the end zone. He is eighth touchdown rushing this year. Gary? Al, thank you. Joe Paterno, danger of having his losing season. Boy, it's been a long time since Penn State experience that 
There's that last drive set up on the fumble by Snow. Ford already has 116 yards rushing in the game. Well, you know, we just made the comment that he scores a touchdown every 12th carry in his career. Well, it took him 11 carries today to do it. Gillette will kick off. 17-0 Michigan, 8.35 to go in the first half. This is James Bryant. Out to the 20, 30, and oh. up there. Boy, there was a big gaping hole up the middle. One more guy, and he would have broken it. Well, coming up on ABC's NFL Monday Night Football, the playoff race continues to tighten with two very outstanding football teams in the 80s. Put their identical records on the line. Doug Williams on the Redskins, Joe Montana on the 49ers. Action begins live, 9 o'clock Eastern. And on Tana's back, he was out for a while, Steve Young playing in his stead when he was hurt. You know, the 49ers are leading the NFL in rushing the football, but they're not getting the production out of the quarterback right now. If they can get the quarterback in the passing game going again, they're back in the hunt for the playoffs. But they've got to get that going. And, and the Redskins, in turn, they're leading the league in touchdown passes thrown. But their schedule has just been murderous. They have not been able to take a breath. Now you put them both in the feel the same time for Monday night. It should be a real knockdown drag out battle. This is Brian Townsend who is down. Yeah, I know it. Ohio State, there's what they've done thus far. Not getting much for offensive production. If they can just start completing some of those passes and maintain some kind of an offensive drive, if, if nothing else, they'll keep the score down. Well, last year they got behind early, 13 to nothing. And came back. That's right. Won it 23 to 20. And, you know, Fry went into the ball game last year through one in one play, through one pass. It was a big play, kept a drive going, and they went on and scored, and that was the winning drive. Well, Ohio State has won in the years past, and John Cooper feels that they'll be winning again. Right now, they're in danger of suffering their first losing season since 1966. Olive and Graham split out. First down, Fry throws far side. Matlock can't come up with it. Bill Matlock, who's out of Beechcroft High School in Columbus. The people starting to boo a little bit here. One thing about it, you've got to win at Ohio State. Oh, they're used to winning. That's all there is to it. You see Matlock with that smile on his face. He walked on, and the reason he's smiling is all his life, from the time he was five years old, he wanted to play football at Ohio State. He had scholarship offers at little smaller schools he said no way all my life i wanted to be a buckeye so he walked on no scholarship and then he earned one you know his idol is you. archie griffin oh archie <laughs> griffin <laughs> yeah he's, i'm sure i am <laughs> second down 10 at the 29 yard line that hurt dick <laughs> here's a gift to hicks and hicks is going no place and there's oh. a flag flag down gary anderson made the stop there's anderson his brother lars is a freshman at Indiana, and Eric last week on a fake punt went 22 yards. He started the last three games after injuries to John Milligan. Yeah, Eric is the kind of kid that grew up and really didn't have a chance in regard to whether he wanted to play football or not. Both his dad and grandfather both played pro football here. Let's see if we can see the penalty here. That's awesome. Oh, there he is. Right, that's TJ Osman, number 94, reaching out there and unintentionally hitting the face mask. Anderson eventually making the stop. So it's going to set it up now just short of the 35-yard line. Second down, five yards to go. Seabers wide left and wide right. And Brian oh. trouble and buried at the 25. What pressure coming that time. Brent White, junior out of Dayton, was first to get there. But he had a lot of help. There he is, number 88, Brent White. Brent White, number 88. He's very quick. He has good movement there. You'll see him come in the middle of your screen. Now he gets a block right there. He jumps around Jeff Davidson, who locks his feet in the ground. You've got to keep your offensive feet moving. You've got to keep them and maintain a position on those uh, defensive rushers, or that's what happens. Now Fry has a third and 15 from the 25-yard line. Edwards has checked into the football game at a wideout. Also, Jeff Graham is split out. Third and 15. Again to Snow. Snow to the 30. 35, but still short of the first down as he's out to the 37. David Arnold and Trip Welburn over to make the stop. And it's going to bring up a fourth down for John Cooper. You know, 
Michigan keeps moving the ball like they're doing and scoring points. They haven't scored more than 28 points since 1946 against Ohio State. That may be in jeopardy. <laughs> That's a long time. Bowman back to punt. Thus far, you can see what he's done. Colazar will receive it. 6.38 left to go in this first half. He hits it high. Colazar for the fair catch. He'll make it at the 33-yard line. So Michigan, the 17 to nothing lead in this 85th meeting. After that 31-yard punt, will have it. That one will be from the Rose Bowl, UCLA and USC. We're here at Ohio Stadium, and while Michigan is winning this football game, the casualty list is starting to mount. Here's Brian Townsend. Freshman redshirt out of Cincinnati. He has his left knee wrapped heavily, and Horn was also helped off the field. Earlier, Horde was hurt. He came back, however. Michigan has the football now at the 33-yard line. Six and a half minutes to go in this first half. Jared Bunch, the fullback, across the 35 to the 36-yard line. Gain of three. There goes Townsend off. Well, one fortunate thing, if there is a fortunate thing about injury, is that they will have some time to mend. As January 2nd is when you're going to see the Wolverines next. And you'll see them here on ABC playing either UCLA or USC, and we'll know that later today. Colazar and Callaway split to the near side. Bowles. Bowles oh. across the 40 to the 42-yard line, a couple of yards short of the first down. Mike Sullivan made the stop. The young freshman defensive lineman for Ohio State, a battling tough kid, Rick Brimmel, number 90, was in there, Gary, and he's on that big tackle, and he got knocked back off the line of scrimmage. He's going to remember that because he has to face these guys three more years. Brimmel is number 90 out of North Olmstead, Ohio. They call him the Tasmanian Manian Devil. Devil. <laughs> he moves around out there. He that time he didn't move quick enough. No, well, you know, you don't want to stay in front of those guys unless the defense forces you to, you know, by call. Third and two now for the Wolverine. Callaway in motion. Bowles. And Bowles, I don't know if he, got, he did not get the first down. He's going to be stopped short. It'll bring up fourth down. That was Pat Thomas, who's really undersized, playing up front, who made the stop for Ohio State. Pat Thomas, number 54. He is about five foot eleven. Here he is. Now watch him do a nice job against these big guys. He keeps his pads down. See, he butts there, and he now he's good forward body tilt. He keeps moving in there, keeps moving, gets his pads on him, then gets help from his teammate. Good job, Pat Thomas. Well, he was an outstanding high school wrestler. It looked like it helped him on that particular play. I asked him about being in a mismatch, you know, physically. He says, Coach, I never consider myself a mismatch. He said, I can take these guys on. <laughs> Here's Gillette, his second punt of the game. Olive is back. The rush coming to the near side. Olive calls for the fair catch. And it'll be just across the Ohio State 20-yard line. 36-yard punt that time by Mike Gillette. Gillette came in here fourth in the Big Ten. So Ohio State will have it, and let's check in now with Becky Dixon. Gary, as you know, when it comes to some of the smaller details of running a football team, no one is more attentive than Bo Schembechler. Now, here's just a couple of the examples I found along the sidelines. For players with poor eyesight, no need to worry. Each player has at least two extra pairs of contact lenses. Also, each player's eye prescription is carefully cataloged. Now, overseeing all of this, well, the team has its own ophthalmologist, Dr. Gary Sandahl, who said, we may not always be able to catch the football, but I'm going to make darn sure that we can see it. As for Bo, he never leaves anything to chance. <laughs> Thank you, Becky. Here is Fry scrambling out of a difficult situation. He gets back to the 23, a gain of three yards, and is buried there. What was it you're saying? You ought to give some of those extra glasses to the officials? Were you <laughs> saying that to me? No, no, you said that. <laughs> you said that. I used to get myself in enough trouble without your help. <laughs> I set you up on that one. I knew what you were thinking. I've been working with you long enough to read your mind. Well, this guy is something special. The dean of Big Ten coaches. He's headed to his ninth Rose Bowl, and look at that. 215 wins. He's fifth all time on the winning list, and of course leading all the active coaches as of this moment. Second down and seven. Fry with pressure. Gets it off. Yeah, the catch is made. 
And the big tight end finally able to hang on this time. Jeff Ellis, he's had a couple of slips through his hands, but this time he was able to latch on to it. Jeff Ellis coming off from the right here, coming off there on the pattern. Now he works up field, he moves an inside move. You'll see it now, and he gets it off there. He moves right outside there, did a nice job. A little zone stop tight uh, pattern, though Veda Murray was free safety playing a man to man. That's the first down, sets it up across the 35. Ellis is 6'4", 230, he's just growing. They want to get him on the weights, and he will be outstanding he his final two years. Great big hands, Gary. First down from the shotgun. And trying to make a sliding catch. Bobby Olive can't do it at the 47-yard line. You know, Bobby Olive is the number one of those kids that walked on. He did not have a scholarship. Uh, had opportunities to go to the smaller schools. Walked on, no, I want to play here. And talking to him the other day, I asked him about how he liked fielding punch, you know, because this is his first experience at it. He said, Coach, I'm just starting to enjoy it. <laughs> well, that was the point we were going to make as Vince Workman, when he was ruled ineligible after signing with an agent, they lost their punt returner. Sure. They lost some depth the running, running back. back and some leadership. Oh, yeah. And Olive was the guy that inherited that punt return department. Second and ten now. Graham and Edwards split out. They're checking off. Bride comes back with it to Snow. To the 40 and out of bounds. Gain of four. It'll bring up third down and still about six yards to go. Mark Messner over there reacting on the play. Good job outside linebacker play by Bobby Abrams. He delayed the play long enough, wouldn't let it turn up. He strung it out, and then the pursuit came and made the play. Fry's had some big games. We did a game earlier this year against LSU where he threw for 281 yards. And last week when they tied Iowa, he was 7-9, 109 yards in the second half. Second half. So Fry's had some good moments. He is 4-13, as you probably saw graphically just a moment ago. Third and six. Good protection. Up the field and trying to catch it as all it did he or did uh, he, he trap it? it? Nope, they say he trapped it. Uh, it looks like he caught it from here. It sure looks like Olive caught the ball. Here he is coming back to the inside, right in the middle of your screen. Now notice how slippery that turf is, Gary. He tries to get body control right there and he starts slip. Oh, he just jumped out down there. I think he caught that ball. I thought it hit the ground. Yeah. Gosh darn it. Just depends. You That's have the your first contact lenses on? <laughs> Go down there and get a pair of those contact lenses, will you? That's the first time we've disagreed all year. <laughs> Fourth and six. Bowman, the punt. You know, that's our lets it hit. And the ball is going to roll to the 28 of Michigan. 2.43 to go in this first half. 17 to nothing, Michigan. Laboratories. Wang makes it work. Well, the ghosts of the past. Ohio Stadium. What tradition. Over 89,000 on hand for this 85th meeting. The biggest game of the year for these two clubs. One of the great rivalries in all of sport. And right now, Michigan with a 17 to nothing lead. They have the football at their own 25-yard line. Thus far, the Wolverines have been able to pick up 207 yards on the ground. Kodos are in motion. Round to throw. Wide open, Kodosar, and he's across the 50 and fights his way to about the 47-yard line. Just gave him a little too much time to throw that kind of pattern. Here, Demetrius Brown, number seven, right in the middle of your screen. Play action fake. Here, now he looks back. Look at that left-hander, Gary. Again, throwing the ball from the wrong side of your body. It looks funny, doesn't it? Here it is. Zone pattern. He hit it right up in between the deep back and the short coverage, man. Got it right in here. Nice throw. Better get him down. Boy, I tell you, something in it about this Michigan program. You can lose the top-rated passer in the Big Ten of Michael Taylor, and you just bring in Demetrius Brown, and he just continues it on. That's First down toss, now he gets it up to Hoard, and Hoard, a flag is thrown as Hoard gets to the 40-yard line, about three yards short of the first down, Mike Sullivan on the stop. That's the old Jack Curtis Utah shuffle play. Every time Michigan runs that play, they run it from some very, very different offensive formation to just sort of break your concentration. Look at Bo. <laughs> Talking to Bo, as you know, he went underwent open heart surgery again in the offseason. I said, 
Oh, I sensed last year you knew you weren't feeling what he said. You know, the game that really told me was Minnesota a year ago in the Metrodome. I was all excited. Illegal use of hands on the offense. Still first down. And he said, I knew I needed to get some help. But how about what the doctor said? Well, to him? but I tell you, he hasn't really been, I guess, sticking to the program that the doctor wants when the doctor has threatened to show up at his home if he doesn't come in for a checkup every once in a while. Well, I watched him last night because I sat right next to him at the dinner table. He didn't put any sour cream or butter on his baked potato, and he passed up dessert. He ate the lasagna. That was it. And didn't eat the steak. So, doctor, if you're listening, your patient is doing well. He's disciplined. <laughs> <laughs> I should say that again. So the penalty now makes it first down and 16 yards to go. 142 left in this first half. Look at the footing again. And this time the catch is made by Horde. He's grounded instantaneously. Gained very little on the play. Excellent defensive play that time. By Mike McCray. Yep, McCray coming over. He's been the, one of the two best defensive football players the last few years at Ohio State. And he's been injured this year, Mike has, and he hasn't really been able to play up to par. He's just healthy right now. You see him working in the middle of your screen now in the left-hand corner now working. He's reading his own coverage. He drops out there. Put a nice tackle. See, knees bent, shoulders back, head up, boom. You say he's feeling the best he's felt. He's had an abdominal muscle pull that has shelled him, and he's really had a tough time coming back from it. He's an NFL prospect. Second and 16. Brown, there's the shovel pass forward. The horse. Horse to the 45. The 40 slips and falls, and that may have cost him a first down. Boy, the footing is really, really treacherous. And now Brown runs up and calls the timeout. Another way to run the shuffle. Now watch the fullback go in here. The tailback goes in here. Quarterback come back, make the fake. Tailback turns around, and he just shuffle passes it back to him underneath the tackles, draw a pass block. Very clever. Remember we just said they run this from a very formation. Now watch it. And he just flipped it to him. There it is. Actually, now he came out of the fullback position this time. That's... Horde has been tailback. There he was at fullback. They're going to very measure. Clever. They're going to measure, see if he got the first down. That slip brings the chains in. That, by the way, is an incomplete pass if they would fumble that ball. There's no yes, fumble no, on the that's play. A, it's a, a lot of people always confused about that. Right. And uh, Michigan calling for the timeout, using the timeout, with now 43 seconds left in this first half. Trivia question. Who is the quarterback that first ran the shuffle pass? He later became, look at the, your spotter there, or Bill Friel, he's trying to whisper to well, you. Give me he later became a broadcaster. I don't know, Tom Harmon. No, Tom Harmon. <laughs> Lee Grosscup. Did was Lee Grosscup. Is that yeah, right? Utah. He was the first one in Utah. Playing for Jack Curtis. Coming up at halftime, we'll set the stage for that big, big battle from the Rose Bowl between USC, UCLA. USC looking for a return to the Rose Bowl. USC seeking their ninth national title, their first in 10 years. As we found out, Rodney Pete will play. And of course, Troy Aikman would love to have a big ball game for UCLA. I have not seen USC on film all year. I've been on the West Coast twice, and saw UCLA and did one of the games and saw the films. And it'll take a very good football team to beat UCLA, especially if they play like they did against Nebraska. Well, that uh, measurement indicated they were short of the first down. Think they'll run it? <laughs> Two timeouts left for Michigan in this first half of play. Brown has them set up with receivers wide left and wide right. Bowles and Horde in the backfield. They try to pick up the first down with Horde, and he didn't get much. The ball comes out of there, but John Kaczynski did. Was that Kaczynski? Kaczynski had a great game a week ago. Sophomore out of Riverhead, New York. The clock running, and it's fourth down. They didn't get it. And are they going to kill the clock again? They haven't yet. It's still running. I don't know. Uh, 15, yeah, 14. They 13. have two timeouts remaining. I don't know what they're doing. They're just not going to. They're going to play conservatively yeah. here and just let the clock expire. Yeah. Well, you got the 17-point lead. Actually, I right now, I would feel good if I were Ohio State in that we're, we've gotten a little better. Now they call a timeout with one second. They're not going to try a field goal. Gillette does both the punting and place kicking. 
Oh, look at Coop. He wants an explanation. <laughs> well, Gillette's coming on the field, and he's got in his hand a tee. His longest this year is 49 yards. Ken Solomon will come out and hold. The longest in his career is 53 yards. And this is going to be, Dick, a 57-yard attempt. Maybe 56. Let's he see has the put windows back there. He has the windows back. This will be 56 yards. So it would be a career long. Why wouldn't you uh, run a play, try to make a few yards, and call a timeout? I don't know. Snap is down. Gillette's kick is on the way, and the kick is good from 56 yards. What a way for Bo Schembechler and the Wolverines to end this first half. Gillette with a career-long 56-yard field goal, his second of the day. It's 20 to nothing. Michigan with the halfway lead. Boy, and Gillette got into this one. He really hit it. Good footing, got the left foot down, got the good follow through. He knows that going through, Gary. Look at this. Longest in my career. He's got to be excited. Boy, it took a long time to get there. Let's go to New York now. Here's Al. The Wolverines with a 20 to nothing lead. And Dick Vermeil at the top of the show. We talked about two things that needed to happen for Ohio State. That was how they'd stand up against the offensive line. It hasn't happened. They've given up 205 yards on the ground. And then you also said you needed a big game from Greg Fry. And in the first half, 4 of 14 for 40 yards. And you know, really, not many of those passes have been defense. They have been thrown incomplete. And if he could get a, a hot streak going for him, he could get him back in the football game. But you can't throw incompletes. Hey, they're going to knock a few down, and they're going to pressure you some. But you, when they're open, you got to hit them in this one. Gillette, who kicked that record 56-yard field goal, Michigan record, kicks off. And here comes James Bryant out to the 30-yard line. So Ohio State will set it up there. By the way, to go back on Gillette, the 56-yarder broke his old record of 53. He now has 17 field goals this year, which breaks his old record of 16. But you know, that's still not the longest field goal ever kicked against Ohio State. Morton Anderson, when he's playing at Michigan State one time, kicked one 63 yards. And he's still kicking it <laughs> for New Orleans. He might be as good as there is in the NFL. Oh, I think he's the best, but I don't... I don't wouldn't hesitate to say that. From the 30-yard line now, Fry hopes to have some success. Play action fake, rolling out, got a block, throws up the field, and the catch was made for a moment and then dropped. See, Bobby now, Olive had it but couldn't hang on. See, now that pass was defense. He didn't throw that incomplete. That was good defense, good reaction. Now here he is, coming off Bobby Olive, working underneath to go on double zone on him. Now Arnold pulls back into the flat. Corner will be on the right-hand side coming from the screen. Chip Roborn right there, the safety. Good job of defense got up there. You can still make that catch as you get bigger and stronger and get that ball to your body quicker. Well, as you mentioned, this guy isn't all that big. He oh, wants to get bigger and stronger. He, he, he's skinny. That's good quick, though. Second down, 10 for the 30-yard line. Edwards, Bernard Edwards goes in motion for the Buckeyes. Fry to Snow. Snow, good job. Hole, 40, 45. He's going to break it to the 50. Still on his feet to the 40. Into the 34-yard line area, first down. As you watch now, the key to this is guard pulling and getting a kick out, big tackle pulling and leading through with counteraction to hold the linebacker, then coming on back. Successful run, well executed. All right, now here goes the big lineman. Davidson kicks out. There stays the X-79, gets the block on Anderson. There's a poor tackle right there. Good running. Get that hand down, and off he goes. First down. 37-yard gain. He had a 23-yard run back in the first quarter. Give to Matlock, and Matlock thunders to the 27-yard line. I got a feeling John Cooper had some things to say at halftime. I'm sure he had some things to say at halftime, but at the second quarter, I mentioned it, and I felt it, that Ohio State was gaining just a little bit mentally. They're getting pumped, and old Cooper, he'll get a pump. He's been in some tough battles. He's played against Michigan. The Rose Bowl beat him. You know, he knows how to win. Second down and four now. Minus scrimmage, the 27 of Michigan. 20 to nothing. It was all Michigan in the first half. Receivers wide left and wide right. 
Rye stumbles coming out from center. Gives it to Snow. 20 oh. stumbles. He's got a first down, though, at the 16-yard line. Alex Marshall tripped him up. And again, a big hole in Cooper now. Really trying to fire up his buck out. He's got him going. Now take a good shot here. Now stays near at number 79. Reaches out. He gets a turnout block right there. Another block inside by Davidson. There's the hole. He reaches for it. Now again, good balance. He gets the hand down. Gets a little more yards out of it. First down now at the 16-yard line. Snow with 105 yards. His best was 128 against Purdue earlier this year. Olive goes in motion. Fry to Snow. Snow's got a hole. Snow to the 10, to the 9. Trip Welburn again on the stop. This is the best moment of the day thus far for the Buckeyes. They're on the move. Again, follow the line blocking. They're going to double down right here, get the power. Now they're going to pull a guard through and kick out with a fullback. Simple old fundamental football. Here they go. Kick out with Matlock, number 11. Right, good job by Davidson at the point of attack. Trip over and the safety comes up and makes the play. Momentum changing, Gary. Second and three to pick up a first and goal. Snow has really picked up this Buckeye team. Drive to Matlock. Matlock, he's got a first and goal inside the five to the four. And they were just moving the pile forward that time. P.J. Osmond made the stop. Look at Cooper. He used to, at Arizona State, get a flag or a towel he'd wave and get the fans into it. Now he's trying to do it on the near sideline, and Ohio State trying to get on the school board. Well, we saw him do that a couple games early in the season. The fans didn't react. They weren't used to that kind of thing here at Ohio State. But I think right now, if he gets a towel, he'll get him involved. First and goal at the four. This is their best effort of the day. Play action pass would be good right now. That's Jay Cook, 82 in motion. Pitch back to Snow. Snow to the end zone. Touchdown. I feel it was Davidson. I'm not sure. I saw it this late, Gary. Let's see. There he is. Now watch him get the kick out. Yeah, I got the kick out right there. They opened up that hole. I made a good call, didn't I say? Boy, I hey, did. a pass would be good right now, and they ran. That shows how smart I am. Sorry, <laughs> talking like that, you're going to be coaching again. No, no, no. no. 20 to 6 Don't now. Don't start any more bedrooms. <laughs> Omar will do the the point after. He's perfect this year on 19 attempts. Scott Powell the hole. The kick is on the way. And Ohio State has come out of the dressing room with a new resolve. They are a new football team. 20 to 7 now, Michigan. There again, there's a key play by Jeff Davidson, number 60. He kicks out on David Key right there. Gets the lead block by Matlock, number 11, at the point of attack. Knocks the linebacker down. Now it's up to Vader Murray, 27, to make the play. Before he gets in the end zone, he can't get her done. Snow with 59 yards rushing on that drive, and he took it in. 20 to 7, Michigan. John Cooper's team took the opening kickoff the second half. They went 70 yards in seven plays. And you made an interesting observation, Dick, about that long field goal just before the end of the first half by Gillette of Michigan. Well, Gary, over my career coaching, I recognize one thing. If you're leading real good and make a big play like a touchdown right before the half and you're leading, sometimes that mentally goes negative on you in halftime because you relax a little bit. If you're behind and make a big play before the half, it fires you up and says you have a chance. But sometimes you can come out of the locker room, say, hey, we've got the game one. Hey, we hit a 56 yard and we don't have to play the second half. No, it won't work today. Well, Bo's got to be a little anxious right now. 20 to seven, Michigan with the lead. They're going to get the ball for the first time in the second half as Colazar and Callaway go back tomorrow to kick off. Colazar coming to the near side, and it hit him and went out of bounds, so they'll have to take it there. Boy, that is a big mistake by a veteran at the 12-yard line. Michigan will have it. He just misjudged it. I see he's looking up, and he doesn't see the sideline right there, and then he feels it can drop. Just misjudged it, and this young man doesn't make many mistakes. Sure-handed. A veteran that time 
just got away from him. And again, you just sense playing on the road and the way the second half has started to go Ohio State's way that you can lose your poise a little bit. Yeah, but the one advantage Michigan has is the offensive line. I just saw John Vitale down there. He's grabbing by the face mask. He's getting ready to go, and they'll come off the ball, and they have the ability to retaliate. They've already gained 205 yards on the ground. There's Demetrius Brown's passing numbers in the first half. Now, the official stepping in, and uh, we're going to have the first warning on the crowd. Now, before we have all of that developing, we're going to go down to Becky Dixon. Gary, I just talked to one of the Ohio State offensive players, and I asked him what John Cooper told his team at halftime. He said, I have no idea. Cooper spent the entire time with the defense. He was very upset with the way they played in the first half. We'll find out here in the third quarter just how effective his talk was. Let's find out who took the offense. <laughs> <laughs> here we go again. They'll try to get this snap underway from the 12-yard line. I'll tell you who talked to the offense. It was Jimmy Coletto. I've watched him coach on the practice field, and he's an intense guy. Oh, he gets after you. Brown underneath center. Their first snap of the second half. Again, the bowl. And oh. bowl goes nowhere, and Ohio State is fired up. That was Mike Sullivan, the senior, out of Timberlake, Ohio. The Sullivan twin who played so well this year for the Buckeyes. That's Mike Sullivan, the defensive nose tackle right here. You'll see him now. He takes here and he comes down from the backside. He has the kind of quickness that will allow you to do that. He realizes right here. See, he's got a double scoop block in that zone blocking. He comes down backside, gets him down. Great play by the nose guard. Now, there's a flag that was underneath all that. I just now spotted it. The fans just now reacted to it, and it's against Ohio State. Got a dead ball, late hit on the defense. Oh, First down. That's when they're not controlling your enthusiasm right there. Now, that could really stem some of this momentum that John Cooper's team has built. They had him stop for a no gain. Instead, the penalty. Taking a, a look again. Look at Sullivan at the nose guard. They're using the zone block. Two guys to wall off. He breaks it, comes down the line of scrimmage. Now, let's see if we can find the late hit. He went God, down let him play. That is uh, Brian, shaky, really yeah, shaky. Shaky, you're being polite. Yep, from the 29-yard line now. And again, they can't get the snap away, and the official will go up and let him huddle. Now, the rule is you try twice to go up underneath center and get the snap. After the second time, the PA announcer comes on and warns the crowd. Then if it happens a third time, you start getting charged timeouts. And if you run out of timeout, then they start assessing five-yard penalty. That's right, John. But if I were Cooper right now, I'd find out which official threw that penalty flag and then find out what state he lives in. <laughs> I think you're fired up, Coach. Oh, I tell you, we've got to let the kids play. The kid made a definite attempt to, to brace and not hit yeah, the Yeah, I agree. Right I agree. Contact. You don't argue with me. I agree with you. Here we go. Can they get this ball snapped? First down now for the 29 by a penalty. Brown giving off to Horde. Horde trying to go wide, and he slips, and oh. another penalty flag is thrown as he oh. makes it to the 36-yard line. They're going to call holding on Derek Walker, the tight end, number 89. Jim Peel is over there to make the stop for Ohio State, and you got it. That's what it is. Gary, whenever a fullback starts inside and can slide along the line of scrimmage to the outside of your tight end buck, that takes a long time. Normally, it takes a good hold. <laughs> Holding on the offense. Still first down. That's John Nealon, the referee in this game. And so that'll back him up and take the ball inside the 20-yard line, set it up at the 19. I think Bo, by the end of this game, is going to be glad he didn't have that sour cream on his baked potato last night, you know? You get so intense and so fired up down there, and you get so involved. I ate it anyway. I ate what he had left. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I noticed that. First down, 20 from the 19-yard line. They're going to reverse this one to Colazar. He's got a wide Great open run. field to the 25, and good reaction by Ohio State. In particular, Jim Peel looked like that was going to go a long way and just sheer hustle by number 46, Jim Peel got over there. But you know, that was a great offensive call. Now, it's an eye toss. Get everybody going. Ohio State is really fired up, okay? Here they're coming. Here comes Kaczerski, 95 back there. 
good call because you could really anticipate full flow as part of the defense. And Mark Bellini, number 48, knocks him out of bounds. Mark Bellini, was that Jim Peel? Jim Peel. They both have similar numbers, 46, 48. It was Mark Bellini. But anyway, it's going to bring up now. They picked up some yardage. Second down, still 11 yards to go. Back to throw, Demetrius Brown. He shovels it forward to Horde, and they're there. Good reaction that time by Ohio State Derek McCready, number 93. The transfer out of Waldorf Junior College in Iowa. Here he is on the right side of your frame. The same pass, a little shuffle pass that they ran successfully early. Here he, he chucks the block, he gets off him, he works up inside there, finds a guy coming right back on him. Scrapnik number 75 says, darn it, I missed you. Well, this guy has tremendous intensity. He's very yeah. mechanical of what he does. Out of Canada, Montreal. He told me the other day in the locker room, he says, the one thing I'm going to do when I line up on Scrapnik, I'm not going to stay there very long. <laughs> That's smart. <laughs> Third and 13 now. Round back, pressure coming, steps up. Rolling the far side, throws up the field, and Colazar made the catch. First down at the 49 of Ohio State. You can't give the kid that much time. This is a great play by Demetrius Brown. Now, he gets back there. The coverage does a pretty good job initially. No real pressure. See, they're watching for him to scramble because he's such a good runner. He gets outside containment of McCready there, nonchalantly throws that down in between the zone defense. One rolled up, one played deep. Good job, good execution on the part of the quarterback. What a career John Colazar has had. He's averaged 23.3 per catch in his career, and that was a 26-yard catch. He has made some big plays as a receiver, as a punt returner, a kickoff man, the senior out of Westlake, Ohio. You know, his numbers for the day. His dad played for the University of Michigan as well, Gary. 1953, 54, and 55. That kind of took the air out of the crowd, didn't it? Yep. They had him backed up, thought they were going to get the football, and round buying time, got the first down. Michigan is used to I mean, third down. I'm sorry, third down Gary. and 13. They're used to pressure situations. They're coached with pressure on the practice field. On a third and 13, they picked it up. That is a first down. Yeah. Yeah. And the line of scrimmage, the 48-yard line. On a third and 13, they pick it up on a 26-yard completion in motion now comes Callaway to the near side Bowl. to the 40 and out of bounds pick up of eight yards on the play it'll be second down and two Jim Peel Zach Dumas on the stop Bowles had a groin pull and did not play but coming out of the game two weeks ago he was only 448 yards away from the all-time single 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 season rushing record held by J Jamie Morris of 1703 yards you know it's conceivable that a guy like him not missing last week and playing is you know really going that he could do something like that he said it's a good feeling to have a thousand yards and under your belt that's now going to be producing a first down they indicate for the marking that he did get the first down at the 38 here's a give to Leroy Horde and he runs into a lot of congestion at the 37. Let's take a break for a moment. Let's go back to New York. Here's Al. Well, Gary, you were talking about one great running back. Here's some news about another. Oklahoma State's opening drive ends with this touchdown pass to Hartley Dykes. Barry Sanders had 38 yards on that first drive. He's now 302 yards away from Marcus Allen's NCAA single rushing record. Back to you. 7 nothing from the Cowboys. We have a man shaken up on the last play for Ohio State at the 45-yard line. I think that's John Kaczerski, number 95, there. You know, he's had injury problems this whole season and actually just playing healthy for the first time the last couple of weeks. He's playing with a broken hand. You see the one hand uh, that's taped. That is a broken hand. Now, here he is, 95 in the right-hand corner of your screen. He's coming down the line of scrimmage backside. He is what they call the rush linebacker, and he reaches in there, and you can see he slaps with his right hand, and that is the broken hand. He had a cast on it the other day when we were visiting with him. That can smart a little bit. Best game last week, three sacks. He had five tackles. They think this guy's going to have some great football ahead of him. Good quickness, really good quickness. Second down now, nine yards to go. Kaczerski comes out of the football game. Colazar, Callaway split out to the top of the field. Unbalanced line right. Bowl 
Williams and Horde in the backfield. This is Bowl. He slips. Oh, boy, that field has really caused problems as he goes down short of the 35-yard line. Boy, can that tight end Jeff Brown block? He's the best blocking tight end I have seen this year. Now, the tight end from Iowa, Cook, is maybe more gifted all the way around in the passing game and blocking, but just pure blocking. Jeff Brown, number 80, is the best blocking tight end I've seen. Boy, he had a good block that time. Coming up next on our doubleheader, USC-UCLA. Third down now. Eight yards to go. McMurtry, Callaway split up. 20-7, Michigan. Ford, oh! And as he met, a Sullivan, fourth down, coming up. Hello. That's the other Sullivan. That's John. the other Sullivan. He cornered me in the locker room the other day. He says, Coach, you think I can play pro ball? I, I'd be great on punt coverage and kickoff coverage. Now, he'll appear from the left side of your screen. His brother's shedding the block right there. Oh, him. Oh. One brother helps the other brother put him down. Can you imagine that? A family of six children, two of them, a defensive lineman and a linebacker. That must be a tough group, huh? And John Sullivan came back from a severe knee injury. Now, we're going to have a 51-yard field goal attempt. Gillette just warmed up for this one, kicking 156 yards to the end of the first half. He's hit a 22 and a 56, missed from 37. No it's a line drive, and it hits the goalpost. That ball just didn't look good for the moment it left his foot. You'll see this. He might have been trying to kick that as hard as he tried to kick the 57-yarder. Good snap, good placement. Boom, he just shanked it coming over there. If he was a golfer, you'd say he probably came over the top a little too much with the right hand, huh? Well, he is two for two on the day. 20 to seven, Michigan, 8.07 in the third. Ohio State, the last time they had the football, they went 70 yards in seven plays to score. Now they take over after the missed 51-yard field goal attempt at their own 34. Graham and Olive split out. You sit. Ohio State has a chance to really climb back into this one. Here comes Snow. And Snow works out to the 38-yard line. Eric Anderson made the stop, along with Bobby Abrams. He had that good cutback ability, that low center of gravity, good natural instincts. And then he has that vision. He can see those cutbacks. Snow out of Cincinnati. He, along with... Vincent Clark played together in high school. Clark starting cornerback for the Buckeyes. Second down, five for OSU. Edwards motion. Fry spread out. Up the field, complete to Edwards. And Edwards has got a first down to the 44 of Michigan. Anderson on the stop for the Wolverines. Fry playing a lot more confidence right now. All right, now, plus he got a good block out there and gave him a good throwing lane. Now, you're going to see a real nice, real nice block right there. Got done it. There it is. Got it cleared. He knocks down Alex Marshall, number 59. He's out there all alone. Good throwing lane between he and Alex. That's Edwards. Excuse me. Good job. Good execution. Edwards, an ex-quarterback, wearing Chris Carter's old number, number two. Picked I, up 17 yards. I hit the telestrator needle on the monitor. <laughs> Getting too excited. That's all right. <laughs> Line of scrimmage at the 44 of Michigan now. 7.04 to go in the third. Fry, play action fake. In trouble. Got rid of it. He wanted to play action fake to Snow and then return the football to him, but Alex Marshall, a linebacker, was in his face. Alex Marshall has the real good quickness. You're going to see now a little play action initially, then he wanted to throw the check down. Now here comes Alex Marshall. Here he is in the School of Arts and Letters. He wants to be a lawyer. See? <laughs> Hit like a lawyer, didn't he? <laughs> That's going to bring up now second down and 10 yards to go. Olive comes into the huddle late. 20 to 7. It was 20 to nothing at half. Ohio State scored on their first series for the second half, and we've come to their second opportunity of the second half. Fry rolling the near side. Up the field, complete. The catch was made by Olive. He's got it to the 25. First down for the Buckeyes. Now you're going to see, you're going to get the counteraction, and he comes back out here. 
that keeps people back inside. It gives him the throwing lane to the outside. Now, here comes the action. There goes the boot action right there. Now he's back out on the corner. Clean has the throwing lane, gets it in there in a turn-in pattern. Good job. Fry is a different man in the second half. He was 4 of 14 in the first half, and now moving the football team. First down at the 25. Edwards in motion. He is 6 of 18 for the game now. Give to Snow. Snow barrels across the 20. Good job by Matlock. Good offensive line blocking led by Jeff Ulanek, this offensive center. Here's the big center right here. Does a real nice job, but follow the fullback as he appears. Here he comes, number 11, right in through on the linebacker. Does a real nice job of climbing his frame and giving that good cushion to make that five-yard gain in there, six-yard gain. Well, that offensive line of Ohio State has been together all year long, led by this guy, Ulanek. All Big Ten the last two years. The next guard now playing the center spot. Second down, three. Snow again, and this time gobbled up. That's Spencer again on the stop. Mark Spencer, biggest linebacker they've had in years. He's 6'5", 245 pounds. And you know something? Guess how many? He made 455 tackles in high school. You think he'd be tired of hitting people by then, would you? <laughs> Heavily recruited, a prep All-American. Graham comes out of the ball game. Olive checks in. Third down now. Still two yards to go. Can't afford to get very fancy in this situation because you can think you have two downs to make the first down. Olive comes in motion. No, trying to get outside. He's got it. He's got the first down and then some. He's inside the 10 to the 9. First and goal now, Ohio State. This is deep high handoff. They really didn't want to go outside with it. But they have down blocking. Here's the backside guard, number 50, Jeff Davidson, pulling on it, gets a little kick out. But he didn't want to run outside. It was constricted inside. He had good acceleration. He bounces back outside, gets a block from Bobby Olive down there, throwing all 145 pounds in front of that defensive back, and they make the first down. That is a career high, 138 yards for Snow. And we're still at the five-minute mark of the third quarter. First and goal at the nine. This time, Matlock inside the five. Touchdown, Ohio State. attempt the point after. We've had a complete turnaround in the second half. The hold is Scott Powell. The snap, the kick is up, and we have a flag as they collided with Amaro. He's down. The kick was good, and Amaro still down. He's been a superb kicker. He has not missed inside the 49-yard line all year long. And he goes limping off. It's now a 20 to 14 game. And John Cooper, whatever he said at halftime, he better bottle it and use it the next game. They're going to set that penalty on the ensuing kickoff. All right, the key to this play right here was Zacharoff, number 51, a big offensive guard, an honor student here at Ohio State, getting a great block in the right there, opening up that hole. Here he goes into the end zone. A walk-on. We talked about him earlier. What a thrill for Bill Matlock, his first touchdown of the year. Here's, look at this. Hey, we got her in there. So after trailing 20 to nothing at halftime, it's now a six-point game. Well, John Cooper came out in the second half trying to get the crowd into the game. He certainly got his football team back into the game. There's that last drive. Trailing 20 to nothing. They've cut it to six. And now the 
penalty after the point after will have Omaro kicking off from the Ohio State 40-yard line. I tell, you, I tell you this, Gary, when you're on the sideline as a coach and you feel that momentum change, even though you're the better team, I tell you, it is tough to stop it from snowball on you and rolling. Oh, man, it's tough. Omaro kicking off. Colazar waiting on it. He'll bring it up to the 20. To the 25 and out of bounds at the 26 yard line. Taking a look at fine offensive line search here. Good block by the tight end. Tim Moxley gets a nice block. All right, right here he comes out and gets a nice line back. Her block, and then we get a nice block right here. They hand it right off inside. That's taking them on one and one. All right, now Moxley turning out. There it is. Now he powers his way into the end zone over two defensive backs. Good job. And that point of attack block by Greg Zakharov and Jeff Mulenik did the trick, Gary. Boy, he was sniffing the goal line, wasn't yes, he? Yes, he was. Coach Jim back there trying to do what you're talking about. Get this momentum back. The thing is, they have the athletes on the field that can make the big play and switch it around. From the 26 and a half yard line, they'll start the drive. Ford. And the pick back tail back to the 32 yard line let's go down now to becky dixon all right thank you very much gary with me is wendell moxley the father of ohio state tackle tim moxley now mr moxley is an avid ohio state fan but he's trying to stay calm here today because last year during this game he suffered a heart attack let's go back to last year what happened well i guess i got too excited and i uh, did some things that i shouldn't have done and, uh, it all came to an end right up there at the university of michigan it's hard not to do it during this game i know yes, What's, How's your health now? It, it, it's real good now. I've done made a lot of changes, and uh, it's the best it's been in years, probably. Did you ever consider missing this game today? Yes, my wife and, and family tried to get me to stay home, but I couldn't do it. I see you won out. All right, Mr. Yes. Moxley, thank you. Gary? All right, Becky, thank you. That pass complete to Greg McMurtry picks up the first down for Michigan at the 47. All right, just a play-action pass now. Slot man will come in and make a flat move. See to draw the coverage out. Now there goes McMurphy working inside. Good time. He gets the ball there. Here comes Sullivan inside out. Dumas puts him down number 21. And so Michigan now trying to fight uphill a little bit after having their lead cut to six. And that's the way to begin it. McMurphy latching onto that one. Ford and Bunch in the backfield. First down at the 47. Callaway in motion. Bunch again. Our Ford, I should say, and he's across the 50 to the 49. Going to bring up a second down about five. Pat Thomas on the stop for Ohio State. You made a good point. When you have to stem enthusiasm when you're playing on the road, it's awfully nice to have an athlete up front, especially that big offensive line. And athletes that are so well disciplined, and, and actually it's an advantage to now be Michigan because every week you go play somewhere as the University of Michigan, you're that team's big game. And they're used to this kind of pressure. Second, let's make it six. Bowles had been in for a while. We're speculating he may be hurt. Eric Walker tied in spot to the top of the line. High formation. Ooh, Woo. here comes Hord. He's got a first down, Boy. and he's to the 38 of Ohio State. I'm not too sure that I think they took a chance on a line slant that time and just ran a slant to the inside. They picked it up nicely, walled it off, and broke to the outside. Now, we get him walled off here like this, get him walled off, and that allowed the running lane to the outside. They might have been slanting. Yes, they did. They slanted underneath. Now, the linebacker's got to get there and pick that up if they're going to slant like that. As you can see, Sullivan was late in getting there. Well, that's what you said. They had to make take some chances today. I think Orlando Craig, 56, should have been filling that. They try to take chances to stem that forward wall. This time it's Bunch. And Bunch just drags people to the 30. Out of yard short of the first down. Bunch has great strength. And you got to realize, Gary, he is 240 pounds. 240 pounds. What is just a kid and growing. I think I've used this before, but... When he practices on the Michigan practice field, they put on bunch protectors because he is such a punishing runner. They don't want to tackle it. He's from Ohio, too. You know, he's probably... See, again, you can't let those guys, guys get out of state. <laughs> At the 29 now, it's going to be second and one. Pressy drive here for the Wolverines. Bunch and Horde in the backfield. Horde, and he's straightened up and slammed back. Pat Thomas, the ball is loose. And Michigan recovers at the 35. 
Demetrius Brown was there. Boy, Pat Thomas is playing a whale of a football game for Ohio State. I tell you something, I, I, as a coach, why does the good Lord take a guy at six foot one and 230 pounds that has all the desire and the guts to be the greatest football player in the NFL, and he's just not big enough? Look but at him. What up. a heart. You know, you get, those kind of guys just, they just pump me. Yep. Those overachievers you're always oh, talking I love about. Third down now, seven. The loss back to the 35. Callaway, McMurtry split to the top of the field. 20 14, Michigan leading with 101 to go in the third, and Brown is going to call a timeout. Demetrius Brown asking for the first timeout. So Bo will match some strategy. Will return. There are the vital numbers. So we switch halfway across the country back to Columbus. We have a third down coming up now. Seven yards. Now you got to figure Michigan already is in field goal range for Gillette. If you kick a 56-yarder, it kind of shrinks the field a little bit, doesn't it? Yes, it does. The line of scrimmage to the 35-yard line. Michigan using their first timeout. Brown will have McMurtry and Callaway split to the top of the field. 20-14. Michigan leads Ohio State. Colasar comes in motion. Frazier coming, Brown is going to be dumped. He got uh, rid of it. At the Kitchell but that's going to be that's down. The no, they're going to call him down. They're going to call him down at the 45 before he got rid of the ball. Who was it and hit him? It was John Kaczurski who was shaken up earlier in this game. Here he comes right there, and he has that good quickness, as you said earlier. God, that looks like intentional grounding. And they well, they, the yeah, they blew it they dead. Blew the they get the 45 on the way down. Here he is coming to the top of the screen. He got around to the outside. And again, using that quickness, that's how he got the three sacks last week. So now it's out of field goal range, obviously. And Gillette Big will play. go back and punt. Olive will return it. Olive coming up. And he's going to let it hit. And it's going to go out of bounds at just about the 10 yard line. So Ohio State who has scored on their two opportunities in the second half have it again with eight seconds left in the period and a concerned Bo Schimbeckler who knows he's on his way to Pasadena but he wants the outright championship. Let's go down to Becky. Gary with me is Wayne just a longtime commissioner here in the Big Ten after this season. Wayne is retiring. This is his last official regular season Big Ten football game. And Wayne looking back on all your years in the Big Ten is there one game or one memory that stands out most in your mind. Oh hi Becky I think every time it's the next Big Ten game out it's a big one that stands out in my mind. It may be this one. <laughs> oh for certainly this one. This is the very image of Big Ten football. Great competition is very best. What accomplishment are you most proud of during your tenure? Well, I think our relationship with the Rose Bowl, Becky, a relationship with other postseason games, uh, adherence to rules and regulations. The Big Ten is America's premier conference, and I've been very pleased to represent ten great schools. Wayne, thank you. Best of luck in the future. Thank Gary? Thank you, and thank you, Wayne. 18 years, the Big Ten commissioner. We have come to the end of the third quarter, 20 to 14, Michigan. ABC's College Football will continue after this message and a word from our local station. Quarter. Dick, what did we say about Michigan? They had outscored their opponents 80 to 20 in the third quarter. They were outscored in this last third quarter, 14 to nothing. That's an unbelievable turnaround. It really is. And Ohio State, as we start the fourth quarter, has a second and five. In the third quarter, Michigan had only 72 yards in offense. Fry, sprint draw, play action, throw, complete. The catch is made by Bobby Olive to the 40 41 first down. Eric Anderson for the linebacking spot, making the tackle. It's a crossing pattern off play action. Here he's coming all the way across the field. He's got motion, it shortens his distance that he has to go. Tight ends crossing flat, wide receiver going deep, a three ray zone stretch pattern. He gets it right in the zone. Again, the ball thrown right where it had to be. Good execution. 28 yard completion. You know what this game reminds me of? That LSU game. When they came back That's so right. in that fourth quarter. Yep, and it's an interesting uh, copy of that early performance when they upset LSU and right now trailing by six but on the move first down at the 42 yard line no. 40 drops there first down boy nothing fancy about that I think they caught him in a stunt Gary 
They're just coming off the ball nicely. Stasniak and Jeff Davidson on the slot side of the formation. You see in the middle of your screen, there's a stunt. Nesmith going underneath. They pick him up. They pick him up. They kick Marshall out to the outside. There he goes. Hits that crack. Trump over number three trying to come in and make the play. Snow has played so well against Michigan last year and now having a big game. That's a 17-yard pickup. Gary, when you're a coach in this situation, in the Michigan situation, you need help from your players now to regain that momentum. You, you can't do it all on the sideline. You need some leadership. You need some help. From the 41, a first down handoff. It's Scotty Graham, the fullback, number 35 inside the 40 it'll bring up a second down and still seven yards to go you know michigan is not a big gambling defensive team they're a bend don't break type thing but i sort of anticipating now come with some kind of a, a linebacker dog a weak corner blitz or something and get the big negative yardage play well bo needs something right now hey, yeah they have to take a chance second down let's make it a long seven to go graham edwards split out Graham to the backfield, and the handoff comes to Graham. Graham to the 20, Graham to the 16, first down. Just a good old-fashioned draw play. Nothing really tricky about it. Quarterback's going to take it back. Offensive linemen are turning out. Zone off the stunt right there. Linebacker stunning up field. Takes himself out of it. Graham hits that crack. Here he goes. Key number 26 coming to make the play. 21-yard gain. They're going to mark it at the 17. Amazing turnaround in this football game. It was all Michigan in the first half. They took a 20 to nothing halftime lead. Now in danger of losing that lead. Bobby Olive put out. Give to Graham again. And Graham buries him at the 10. He just buried somebody. Bobby Abrams over there. He's three yards short of a first and goal flexibility, mobility of the running back. Now watch the fullback as he comes in, he hits in here, and he makes this slide move and finds the crack. If a running back can't do that, you can't win running the football. Now watch him hit inside. There he gets turned out. He gets outside Zacharoff's block right there. Inside Ellis's block makes a nice game. Boy, it's nice to be able to have a back that can do that for you. At the 11-yard line, second down three for a first and goal. Just keep, keep letting the offensive line do the job for you. They're coming after him. One wide out is Edwards. A pitch back and fumbles, but coming up with it is Carlos Snow, and that was almost a disaster for the Buckeyes. I think that was a mistake by Greg Fry all the way. I think he's apologizing to the guys right now. I don't know what he did, but I, I know it was a major mistake. You're going to see him right in the middle of your screen. See, I don't know. He knows he broke the play. Everyone else was running one play, and he went the wrong way, then he tried to flip it to him. He knows he made a mistake. Lost back out to the 14. Now it's third and seven. Third and seven. Olive to the top of the field and Jeff Graham to the bottom. And Mark Hicks now in the backfield as they go to the shotgun. Out of time. Over the middle. Olive. Touchdown. He's got it. Touchdown. his second touchdown catch. You know where the other one came? The and last game against LSU. The last play of the game almost. He caught the one that won it for him. 38 Same seconds. pattern. That's right. Same All end of a zone. Sudden, this team from Columbus has played inspired football. They tied it up. Omaro to attempt the point after. Omaro's kick is on the way and for the first time the Buckeyes lead it. see Bobby Olive to the right side of your screen coming in on Dave Arnold now he gives him a little move comes underneath there post pattern there no help inside no safety normally you think you'd have some safety help in there must have been a man to man all the way along the line of scrimmage post pattern touchdown same one they used against LSU look at per hey look at this don't bite it off <laughs> <laughs> well if anybody left us at halftime they're not going to believe the score we have right now was going to just kind of waltz into Pasadena with a complete 
Big Ten Championship now fighting for their collective lives. They led 20 to nothing, now trailed by one, 21-20. As kicking off will be Omaro in this second half. It's been a different Ohio State team. Omaro kicking off. Colazar is going to let it go out of the back for the touchback to the 20. Let's go to Becky. Gary, a very excited man along the sidelines here in Columbus today. Archie Griffin, the two-time Heisman Trophy winner from Ohio State. Archie, you're loving this. I sure am. I wish the game was over right now with the score being what it is. I'm sure you do. The Heisman Trophy, of course, on everyone's mind today. How do you see the race? Well, I think it's between three people. Aiken at uh, UCLA and Pete at USC. And you've got to consider Sanders at Oklahoma State because he's just done an outstanding job. But I think uh, Pete's probably got the edge. It'll be interesting to see how he plays with the measles. And how his stamina can hold up. And we just heard that uh, Barry Sanders is already off to a good start. Archer, do you think we'll ever see another two-time winner? Well, Becky, I did it. So I believe there's somebody else out there that can do it. Okay, Archie, enjoy the rest of the game. Gary? From the 20-yard line, Michigan's got it. Bowles is back in the ball game now with Jared Bunch, the fullback. Callaway goes in motion. 21-20, Ohio State. Here comes Bowles. Bowles for a couple to the 42. And that's all the ball is bubbled, and Ohio State's got it. Mike Sullivan. a look i think they had a full line slant on gary moving the line and they happen to be slanting in the direction of the play got a lot of people at the point of attack here sullivan these guys are all slanting they're moving down there to the right here comes mccready there's pat thomas 54 here's both sullivan brothers right there the ball's on the turf oh. it just squirted out of there it just squirted out and sullivan comes up with it and bo can't believe what's happening here in ohio stadium First down at the 22 of Michigan. It's been all Ohio State. 21 unanswered points in the second half. Gives the snow and snow to the 15-yard line. Gain of six, second and four. Enthusiasm and emotion. Hard to figure, isn't it? Yeah, I'll tell you, there's no substitute for enthusiasm. You know, I once read where Thomas Edison wrote, when a man dies, if he can pass on enthusiasm to his family, he has left them with an estate of incalculable value. And boy, is that ever true. Well, John Cooper certainly uh, left his team with some enthusiasm at halftime. Oh, he gave him something. Yep. Whatever it was, I want something. <laughs> Second down, a long three. Snow and Matlock in the backfield. Edwards in motion. This is Matt Lock to the 10, 5, still on his feet to the 3, first and goal. <laughs> Just this full back belly play again, instead of having to cut back again. Again, good flexibility, he cut outside, they caught him in a line slant, they picked up the line slant, the hole open the other side. Now watch this, Trip Wellborn hits him, Beta Murray hits him, he doesn't want to go down. Boy, bodies just bouncing everywhere. First and goal at the three. Did you see that last shot by John Cooper? I don't think he has anything left. Yeah. He's given all his energy. His football team has been something. You know, the guy that doesn't have anything left would be uh, Coletto calling all the offensive plays for Ohio State right now. Scotty Graham. Graham fighting for the goal line. He's going to be denied the goal line by maybe a half yard. You can't believe how exhausting that is in a game like this. And you're the offensive coordinator, and you're in the press box, and you're calling the plays, and they're being, I mean, just amazing uh, how much pressure and how much tension is created in that situation. It'll be second and goal, and Bo, in all these years of coaching, I'm sure has been in this situation before, but how tough it is to get your team back to where they were, to get them somehow to come back in this football game. This guy the magic at halftime and he looks like he is spent but he's excited his team now trying to build on their lead you know there are a few people in town here that are mad at him because they come into this game you know with a losing record and a chance to have a losing season for the first there. time since 66 when woody hayes was the coach they're spoiled yep second and goal from the one yard line you see the time remaining in this game even the president was fired up last night at the University of <laughs> Dr. Jennings. He wanted to win this one. Second and goal from the one. Fry giving to Matlock. He stopped. 
no place to go. Very yeah, good reaction by Michigan. Very good reaction that time. Give credit to Messner. Messner has made so many big plays for these Wolverines. Good defensive penetration on this side of the line. They, and he just sort of buckled them back right here. See, they're slanting to the play, slanting to the strength of the formation. Got in there. Good call by the defensive coordinator. And Ohio State's going to ask for a timeout. So a great cry will come to the near side. They lost yardage back out to the three, where it's going to be third and goal there. We'll come back. Ohio State by one. And he does. We come back third and goal at the three. The thing you have to remember now is if Ohio State does not score a touchdown here, a field goal would be very, very big because it would give them a four-point lead, meaning that Michigan would have to have come to back score. and score a touchdown to win this thing. So if they don't get it here, a field goal is still very big on this particular drive. Third and goal from the three. The timeout by Ohio State. They have two remaining. Snow and Matlock in the backfield. Snow, he's not going to get much, if anything. Again, it was Messner, number 60, knifing through, got a hand on it. See, now, what you were talking about before the snap, you know, the field goal being... Uh, being enough to force him to score to beat you this, uh, was what they were thinking offensively and calling that type of play on third because that's really long yardage on third down down there. They lost a yard back to the four, so Cooper will have to settle for the field goal. The only negative about kicking a field goal from this distance is you are so far offset to the right on that hash mark. Many times the team will unbalance the field goal line. That's what they have. They've unbalanced the uh, block protection to the left there. 21-yard attempt by Omaro. The ball down. The kick is up by Omaro, and he got it. So he hasn't missed all year long inside the 49-yard line. 14-14 field goal. It's now a 24 to 20 game. 24 unanswered points as Ohio State has come storming back in the game. Taking a look again at that field goal, you can see what I'm talking about with the hash marks way to the right. He really has to do a good job of pushing that ball off to the left, and that's not automatic. Well, the interesting thing about this second half is that Ohio State has scored on all four possessions of this half. Unbelievable. 20 more points. They lead it. 940 left to go. 24-20 Ohio State roaring back in this game after trailing 20 to nothing at halftime. Well, we mentioned that Michigan needed a win today to have sole possession of the Big Ten Championship. If Michigan State wins this game, and it looks like they're going to do that very handily, 29 to nothing, they would fall into a tie for first place with Michigan in the Big Ten, but Michigan still goes to Pasadena because in a head-to-head -head competition, they the Wolverines beat the Spartans. I'll tell you this, though, Michigan State is the best and the most improved football team we've seen all year from the beginning of the year oh, to the end. Oh, boy, there's six straight wins, and George Pearl has got to get a lot of credit for turning that team around. Yeah. Omaro kicking off. Back deep will be John Coltazar. The Wolverine brings it up to the 15, to the 20. Still on his feet and able to get it out to the 24-yard line. Boy, there's some intensity out there. Boy, as we said at the start of this broadcast, this is something special. The Michigan-Ohio State game. Started out like it was going to be all Wolverine. Now the Buckeyes at home, leading by four. 8.23 left in the game. There's that drive after the fumble recovery. You know, Morrow with the 21-yard field goal. You think these two schools don't like each other? <laughs> they have a lot of respect for each other. Yeah. But today they don't like each other. <laughs> so Bo's got to get his team up off the floor. They've got to get something going. Ford and Bunch in the backfield. Bowles has that fumble, not back in the lineup right now. Play action fake. Brown to throw over the middle. McMurtry's got it. He's got it out to the 44. First down, Michigan. Zach Dumas defending on the play. 21-yard game. Did a nice job here. Ohio State was stunning the offensive line, anticipating run. He comes back inside that zone defense, settles right down the hole, and takes it right off the turf. You might remember McMurtry caught a touchdown pass way back in the first quarter, 57 yards in length. That was a 21-yard grab at the 44, the Wolverines' first down. McMurtry Callaway split up. That's Derek Walker, the tight end, moving around. 
Ford and Bunch in the backfield. Ford to the 50, lunges into the Ohio State end of the field at the 48, about three yards short of the first down, and Derek McCready was there on the stop. Actually, uh, they ran the cutback there, not designed cutback, and uh, one of the defenders coming from the backside bolt was coming down so hard he overran the play. So Michigan thinking this drive may be the difference as to whether we have a Big Ten championship to ourselves. You can never count them out, Gary. Second down, four. Colazar, Callaway split out. Horde again. And Horde's going to be short of the first down. Pat Thomas, who's just played inspired football, is down there. So we come to a third down. We have a man shaken up for Ohio State getting up very slowly. That's McCray, but he's going to be okay. The official says, go on, he's okay. But he's going to come out of the ball game. McCray will come out, and Streko Zizakovic will replace him. I can remember uh, trying to say Zizakovic in the first game. I finally nicknamed him Zeke. You know, I got it down, though. It shows you what experience can do, boys. Uh, I tell you. <laughs> You're a veteran now. <laughs> Third down and still almost two yards. Colasar split to the near side. Brown changing the play now. To Horde. Horde trying to go wide, and he's got the first down. He got across the 45 to the 44. Zach Dumas, boy, will he hit you coming up from that cornerback spot. He, Zach Dumas hit him, but Pat Thomas came from the inside of the defensive line, the inside out, and gave him a good shot, ricocheted him off, and that allowed Dumas to go ahead and put him down. Horde comes out of the football game. Clock running, 6.55 left. Kodazar splits to the near side. McMurtry to the top of the field. First down at the 44. Tony Bowles has come in at tailback. Play action fake to Bowles. Brown up the field. Kodazar! He dropped it. Didn't come up with it. He was almost bent backwards trying to locate the football. He had everybody turned inside out. And an ear miss. He split the zone. You'll see Mark Polini. He has deep half the field here, number 48, at the bottom of the screen. He throws it down that seam right there. Polini didn't get to it. He just dropped the football. This is only the second pass we've seen him drop all year. He dropped one. Remember, early in the season, we saw him drop one. Well, he made a big catch earlier on a third and 13. Here's that left hander letting her go again. He's going to be a little disappointed. Second down, 10 now from the 44. And off to Bowles. Bowles inside the 40 to the 39. They're going to be five yards short of the first down. Third down coming up. John Sullivan made the stop. Well, see, pretty quick right now, you start thinking, well, it's third and five. I've got two downs to make that because the field goal isn't going to get it done for me. Right. I've got two downs. I get two downs here. So you're thinking two and a half yards of crack. They came into this ball game averaging over five yards of crack, didn't they? So, Bo Beckler has his play called, third and five. You know, Michigan almost looked a little lethargic coming up the line of scrimmage that time. Brown back. Double pump. Setting up a screen to Bowles. Bowles has the first down to the 30. To the 25. And Bowles to the 21-yard line. First down, Michigan. Boy, that was a that was a change-up call. That's a tailback screen where you initially fake to the tailback, and then he sneaks back under and gets the help of the offensive lineman. You'll note him right here. He'll come in and make the fake. He'll get hidden in here, and then he'll sneak back outside like that and get his wall like coming out to the left there. There he goes. Now follow him. Now you'll take the offensive lineman. There they go. There goes Vitaly number 67. There's Ding Dingman 78 out there. He gets the walled off block right there. Boy, that's a different call for that situation. That's only his 10th catch of the year. Yeah. 17 yards on the play. Back to Bowles again. Horde correction. Horde to the 15 yard line. And he's going to pick up seven yards on the play. Polini on the stop. And. But now, 5-16, the clock running. Bowles will come back into the game. You know, here's that. it's amazing how coaches think. My thought was right now, I would not fool around with my running backs. I'd give that ball to Horde and let him just keep going and going and going because he is that end zone type runner, you know. Cooper looking for something to happen defensively. 
His team with 24 unanswered points in the second half and now hanging on. Second down, three for the 15 of Ohio State. Bowles to the 10, 9 and 8 yard line. It will now be a first and goal for Michigan. Good knee action, good rising knee action. The defense really hanging on the best they can. Maybe they're getting a little worn down in here right now. I don't know. But take a look from the end zone. You'll notice that they're going to take the ball back deep. Offensive line coming off to the right side now. They get it back. Good charge. Good loss. Double team down. Kick up. They got a block on Chesky. Then the number 95. There comes Mark Pelini, number 48. Up there to try to make the play. Bowles now with 103 yards. Ford with 150. Bowles trying to redeem himself after that fumble earlier. First and goal now at the eight. Ford. Touchdown, Michigan. Well, the good teams do it when you got to get it done, right? You bet. Gives the ball to the guy that knows where the end zone is. Here he is, Ford. Now he's playing fullback, starts in and gets the belly cut back. There he goes, reverse now. See, now he gets the cutback. Gets a nice block right there by Vitale 67. Gets him in the end zone. Gets a little shield block by the official who got knocked on his stand. Important point after coming up now. They need to get the point after to make it a three-point lead. Horde with a strong game. Horde becoming such a big player for Michigan. And it's just started to unfold the last three or four weeks. Point after attempt by Gillette. He got it. And so Michigan now has scored their first points of the second half. And they have taken the lead, 27-24. Michigan, after falling behind by four, now has taken a three-point lead with 4.20 left in the game. And there's the drive, 76 yards. Ford with the eight-yard touchdown run, his ninth touchdown run in nine games. Now with 23 carries, 158 yards and two touchdowns. He's a horse. And then they go to Bowles. What a changeup. And, and different style runner. Different style runner. Total points. He got the big he got the record. record. Big day for him. He also set his longest field goal record of 56 yards way back at the end of the first half. Here comes the kickoff. No, this guy is really dangerous. Bring it out. Leading kickoff return man of the Big Ten, second in the country. But he doesn't go anywhere there. There's a penalty flag as he is dropped at the 17-yard line. The penalty being uh, spotted in that area. Otis Williams over to make the stop. Going to be a clipping call against Ohio State. Near the conclusion of today's game, we'll be participating in an 18-year-old tradition, selecting a Chevrolet Most Valuable Player of the Game from each of the teams. The Chevrolet will donate a $1,000 scholarship in each player's name to each school. Line of scrimmage will be the 17 until they uh, step off this penalty. Cooper, not happy about it. Not happy at all. So remember now, Ohio State has scored on all four of their possessions in this second half. Now, Gary, you and I had the opportunity to broadcast that LSU game early in the year, and they were in this very identical situation, much worse, in fact. And they came back with two scores in the last few minutes. The other thing is Fry has gained confidence in throwing that ball in this second half, and so that'll help him right here. So Fry goes in after the penalty. They'll inherit the football at the eight-yard line. They have two timeouts remaining, trailing by three. Back it comes to Snow. Snow out to the 15, gets out of bounds at the 17-yard line. Picks up eight yards on that play. David yep. Key over to make the stop. I think there's a personal foul hitting the quarterback on this one. Uh, Messner to the left side of your screen, left corner, number 60. He's chasing behind, coming down. There's a toss. Boom, he decked him right there. Knocked his mouthpiece out right there. You can see the mouthpiece. That's smart a little bit, and they called a personal foul. I don't think he looked like a vicious intent of anyway, but he gave him lunch. And it's going to move the football out across the 20-yard line. They're still stepping it off. The 15-yarder. And where's he going to stop? They're going to still walk him. 30, 31, 32-yard line is where it's going to end up. And Bozhock. 
You know, those mouthpiece, by 1990, they have to be orange in color. So the officials can detect whether you have it in your mouth or not. That's huh? right. Well, you can see that one, even though it was white, came flying out of there. Yeah. So it's a 32, first down, Ohio State. 4.09 left. Graham and Olive split out to the near side. Fry, sprint draw fake, throws, Ellis, Ellis to the 45, first down to the 49, and here come the Buckeyes. And I'll tell you this, Fry has really reacted well under pressure. I mean, he got his lunch that time. You 17. follow Fry as the quarterback, now the tight end is going to run a crossing pattern coming across off play action, but follow the action of the quarterback after the fake. Here he comes back. Here comes Eric Andrews right up there in the middle. It gives him lunch. He gets the crossing pattern complete anyway. First half, he threw that incomplete. That was Eric Anderson, not Andrews. Here he is again, Eric Anderson delivering it right there. Boy, he's taking a poundy, but he's hanging tough. 17-yard pick up to the 49-yard line. Fry, play action, fake again. Throwback, near side, snow to the 50. 45, 40, 35, 30 to the 29, first down. Similar play to the tailback screen you saw Michigan run on third and five. They fake here. Now follow Snow in the middle of your screen, 25. Now right hand bottom corner. Quarterback rolls away, then throws the screen back. The peel off system. The three linemen out here in front of them. There they already got their block. There's Stasniak right there in front of Julian, eight, number 68. First down. 22 yard pick up to the 29. Try wanting quiet. 320 left in the game. First down for the Buckeyes. Fry gives to Matlock. Matlock spins to the 25. Gain of four to bring up second and six. Mark Spencer on the stop. All right, good job by the offensive line. Ulanek, Ox, all these guys coming off right now, doing a pretty good job of seeing that line of scrimmage. And see, Gary, the strength, the strength of Ohio State football team is their offensive line. That's the only part, really, that they're real strong in, anywhere across the line. Line of scrimmage, just short of the 25. Graham and Edwards split out, second and six. Try, quick pass, complete. It's Ellis again, and Ellis has another first down at the 15-yard line. Murray was over there to make the stop for Michigan. Play action fake, tight end cross. First half, he was late throwing these. Remember, we commented he was taking too much time. It didn't take him long to pick up his rhythm. Here he is throwing a complete second time in a row. Boy, he's grown up in this game. Oh, he really has. He's an outstanding student. He's in, in the English honors program. Also has a double major with history. Someday wants to be a lawyer. Do we need any more lawyers? <laughs> Do we? <laughs> I'll, I'll evade that one. First down now, just short of the 15-yard line. Two receivers to the top of the field. Fry to Matlock. Matlock going in. Five touchdown. Woo! football last. I'll tell you, this is great. This is what makes college football so great. Not only for the fans, for the kids that are playing it, because they learn right now somewhere down the road, they're going to be behind. They're going to, things aren't going to be going real well for them, and there's a way to win. There's a way to, to come back and get it done. Omaro, point after attempt. He'd like to send it back to a four-point lead. And he, does. and he does exactly that. Well, Michigan scored at the 420 mark, and the 202 mark, the Buckeyes came right back. The belly handoff, Ulanek gets a good block. Tim Moxley, number 74, gets a good kickout block. And there is old Matlock. From a walk-on to a hero, you got to love him. Okay. Here he is. You can see right now, they're just good blocking right here by the center here. The guard's coming off here. Tackle gets a turnout. Now he runs in and hits that creek. Full flow with a tailback. Good job by Ulanek walling off the nose guard. Good block by Zacharoff with the point of attack. There he goes. 
I love to see walk-ons do so well. You gotta, it's like the free agent in the NFL. He's not supposed to make it, and he ends up playing the Pro Bowl someday. Got to love him. Do you realize that Ohio State has scored on every possession of the second half, all five of them? It's all coaching. <laughs> but you got to give Jimmy Coletta, the coordinator, credit. Gene Huey, the wide receiver coach. Ron Hudson, who coaches the running back. Bob Blasey, coaching those guards and centers. Bill Bevy, the quarterback. Hey, and Harry Justin, he coaches the tight end. You got to give more credit. Another thing that you got to bring up is that Fry in the second half is 7 of 9 for 125 yards. Same thing he did last week. Yeah, that's right. Same second half against Iowa, week. he was 7 of 9. For 109 yards. So, Omaro, who made it a 31-27 game, with that point after, will kick off. What was that Cooper told us in the first game? One week you're drinking the wine, the next week you're stopping, stopping the, the grapes. grapes. This week he might be able to drink the wine. Huh? He's been due both of them today. <laughs> On the goal line, Kolazar bring it out for the Wolverines. It isn't over. At the 20, 25, 30, he comes out to land the 40. He's to the 50. He's to the 40 of Ohio State. Pat O'Marrow, the guy who kicked off, was over there, and that may have been a touchdown saving tackle. A man shaken up for the Buckeyes. Golazar with a big run. That was O'Marrow who made the tackle, Dick, as we look at it again, you who was shaken up. You talk about competitors. I think this is the longest kickoff return of his career. He came in with the longest of, of 40 yards. Here he's making one when he re there's 40 right, right now. What a competitor. Good blocking up in front, hit the lane, then the kicker has to make the hit. What a game we have here, and another great one coming up. Let's go to the Rose Bowl. Here's Keith Jackson. Well, Gary, it's exciting here, because Rodney Pete, the celebrated measles case, the quarterback for Southern California, came out, warmed up. I think every kid on that UCLA football team was looking at him at one time or another. We're going to have a crowd of over 100,000, and we're going to have a heck of a ball game as soon as you get through. Here's Gary Bender again. Thank you, Keith. I know that'll be a good one, but boy, if he this thinks it's exciting, there he ought to be here. By huh? <laughs> <laughs> the way, Omaro's coming off the field, but he saved that from being a touchdown. So now they're going for the undisputed first place position in the Big Ten. They're 41 yards away with 152 to go. They have two timeouts remaining. 31-27 Ohio State Brown back to throw. Near side and out of bounds comes. Nope, he was out. Bowles did not have a foot in bounds. It's incomplete. You notice who's there to call that with the official? Cooper moved right down there. He had a call out of bounds right off the bat. <laughs> Stops the clock with 146. This is a great way to make a living, isn't it, John? <laughs> Nothing to it. Nothing to it. <laughs> you know what he told me the other day? He said, I never had a clue that coaching Ohio State was this. He said, I am on the go all the time, and a lot of times it's not coaching. Satisfying this alumni group, doing this, doing this. He said, football's big in Ohio. Well, win would really satisfy the alumni here, wouldn't it? For a week. Second down, 10. Callaway in motion. Brown back, stepping up in the pocket. Unloading down the far side and up in the end zone. It is caught for the touchdown by Colazar. Oh, my God. <laughs> you talk about a competitor, huh? Who's the guy that returns the kickoff at 60 yards? Colazar. Here he comes. They have a double zone on right now. Now the safety's over here. He's just sort of the broken play. Oh, my gosh. Here he is going up after it. That's a 41-yarder. You know David what's amazing? Brown. He picked up all 100 yards on that drive. All 100. 59 yards on the kickoff return and 41 yards on the pass reception. I didn't think David Brown, the safety number 27 player, and that was going to play. The last point after is up, and everybody trying to catch your breath. Michigan 34, Ohio State 31. Boy. Look There's at the up. guy that gained all 100, 100 yards. yards. Look 59 at him. yards on the kickoff, 41 yards on the touchdown catch. And the senior who, you remember he dropped that one at the goal line earlier? Yeah, I know it. I'd say it. 
This is why he averages 23.3 yards a catch in his career, scoring 11 touchdowns. Every fifth reception has been a score. He's a big play guy. But David Brown playing safety at that time, I thought he was banged up and wasn't going to play. Well, he was playing. He's been playing with a bad hamstring. Yeah. Gillette kicking off. No, will bring it. Watch out to the 20, to the 25. And he'll get to about the 29-yard line. And Ohio State still with two timeouts remaining. 132 left to go in this game. And Cooper looks up, hoping for yet somehow another remarkable drive. They've scored on all five possessions. Six time to get the football here in the second half. Wouldn't you like to be able to monitor Cooper's pulse rate through this fourth quarter up and down? Huh? That's oh, the reason he works out all that's the time, right? Works out, yeah. From the 39, here they go. Rise been remarkable in the second half. Receivers wide left and wide right. Fly back to throw. Pressure coming. Gets it off to Mark Hicks. Kicks out to the 40. Spins. He's got the Ooh, first down. Watch out. Piling on there, kiddo. Mark Hicks, who could be a big play guy. The former Cal standout. Trip Welburn made the stop from the Buckeyes. They're still alive. They're still moving. They did a real nice job with this two-minute drill on the practice field Thursday. I was impressed with how they handle it. Without the huddle from the shotgun is Fry. Two timeouts left for the Buckeyes. The Hicks again. Hicks to the 48. Gain of eight. Anderson made the stop, and they're going to go without a huddle again. The one thing about Hicks throwing him the ball, he can break the long play as a running back. We've seen it all here today. From the 48, second down, a long two. One minute left in the game. Fry back. Over the middle, broken up. Intended for Hicks again. And one of the Michigan defenders, E.J. Osmond, hit that one. Was it Osmond? Yeah. And Osmond, along with Marshall, was also in that vicinity. And it's third down. And with 56 seconds left, Ohio State now will get back in the huddle and call the play. Look at Bo. <laughs> <laughs> He's just telling Gary to get back off the line, and, you know, get back off the field. He doesn't want to take a chance of getting any kind of a penalty because this guy, you know, Omaro can kick the field goal if he's not hurt. I, hope, I wonder what's happening on the sideline here. Well, he was up and walking away from the shotgun now. Third down. Let's make it two to go. Fry running around, throws behind yeah. the man incomplete. Ellis, the intended receiver, and now it comes to a fourth down. Spencer and Anderson, the inside linebackers in their drop areas that time on Jeff Ellis. So Fry now coming down to what might be his last gasp effort. Olive will be sent in with a play. Fourth and two. That's not too many yards to go for a first down. They're going to run it. Graham, who's been very quiet, puts to the near side. Olive to the top of the field. Wouldn't be surprised to see that tight end cross pattern again. Nope. Fry, play action fake. He's going to take off. And he's going to get the first down and get the clock nice up. Gets out of bounds at the 48-yard line. So he accomplished two things. He got the first down and he got the clock stop. I'll tell you, that was an excellent call, too, because first off, you don't anticipate Fry coming outside with the ball. He does a real good job. Now, they, the defense is here. They get him sealed off with that fake inside. And here he comes outside back there. And I'm not even sure there was any kind of an option pass. That looked like he was going to run all the way. See, there's no one out. Oh, there's just the out pattern out there. That's just the out pattern. One-on-one -on -one thing. Good call. Trip Welburn fell down, which kept him from getting there in time. First down now. Edwards and Graham split out from the shotgun is Fry. 43 seconds left. Throws up the field. It's top. It's hit. And Hicks is dropped about a yard short of the first down by Welburn. They're going without a huddle. Nope, they're going to call a timeout. Good Ohio job. State's going to call for a timeout. They'll have one left. One timeout left. 35 seconds to go. John Cooper's team trailing by three. Here's the story. 34-31. Michigan with the lead. 35 seconds left in the game. Ohio State has one timeout remaining. They have a second and one operating at the 39 of Michigan. Snap to Fry. Looking, throwing under pressure, and is it intercepted? It is an interception by Mark Spencer. And Fry, I think, was just trying to get rid of the football. There was nobody there. I think Mark Messner hit him as he threw it. 
So Mark Spencer comes up with the interception. You can see now there's going to be heat coming on him out right on the outside there. Here comes the heat up behind him, and I think he's just trying to throw the ball away. I Hicks, do. Picks the receiver close as the ball had both hands up saying, what are you doing? You know? Here's a reaction by Bo. <laughs> well, he's headed to his ninth Rose Bowl. No, Coop's got to say no on this one. <laughs> no, no, no. So Ohio State has only one timeout left as Brown will flop on the ball. And with 25 seconds, uh, they're not calling the timeout yet. And we're still waiting for the clock to be stopped, and it is. So Ohio State using their final timeout. You know, it's a shame anybody has to lose a game like this. Oof. But John Cooper, I tell you what. He can drink the wine. Yes, he can. He can drink the wine. After okay. being down 20 to nothing at half. He completely turned this game around and had Michigan reeling. Only to see Michigan make that long drive, two plays by Coltesar to pull it out. Now they're going to do the flop on, you know. Let me say, you know, I, I don't like go the back. flop on play. I really don't. Let's go back on the interception by Spencer. There's some thought that maybe he trapped this ball. Let's there look it and is. See. The ball's in the middle of the screen, crossing there. There it goes. I think he caught it, Gary. You can't tell from this side. But the ball was quite a ways off the ground when he took his pads to the ball. So I think he got it. I hate this play, the flop on. You know, this week is the 10th anniversary of the miracle of the Meadowlands when we fought on the last play of the game. And if I could, I would still vote on eliminating that kind of play. The offensive team should have to advance the ball every snap. I believe that. Second and 12 after that last flop. And of course, Ohio State can do nothing about it now. They've used all their timeouts, and the game turned out to be an outstanding game. Michigan, undisputed champion in the Big Ten. Bo Chim Beckler headed to Pasadena to meet the winner of the game coming up next here on ABC, USC, and UCLA. Our Chevrolet Most Valuable Players of the Game will be John Coltazar, who made that outstanding 100-yard effort. 59-yard kickoff return, the 41-yard touchdown grab. And then we're going to give it to Greg Fry of Ohio State, who did such a great job in that second half of play. To check